is a presentation of Fox Sports. Welcome to Coors Light Fox College Football. On a cool day in Oklahoma, it will be a test of wills. Can Oklahoma State and the nation's number one offense have their way? Or will defensive-minded Gary Patterson and TCU stand tough in Stillwater? Two teams, each with their own style of play, up next on Fox. Welcome to Boone Pickens Stadium in Stillwater, Oklahoma. It's Fox College football as the Cowboys are at home today taking on the Horn Frogs of TCU. Hi, everybody. Joel Myers alongside Brian Baldinger. Welcome to Stillwater as we get ready for a matchup today of two teams that have faced similar situations this year. And Baldy, both have had to make adjustments at the quarterback spot. It's stability, Joel. And so for Oklahoma State today, they're going to get true freshman West Lunt back in as the starting quarterback because last week J.W. Walsh who threw for over 400 yards hurt his leg he won't dress today he's on crutches and if West Lunt isn't healthy and that knee isn't stable from an injury suffered six weeks ago then we're going to see Clint Shelf who has an ability to play the position but has only thrown eight passes all season and for TCU Trevon Boykin is in at quarterback because Casey Pahal, the original starter, has been suspended. And Boykin is really a dual threat guy. He's got great speed and athleticism, but he also has a big arm. He's making his fourth start here for TCU this afternoon. It is a classic autumn afternoon in Oklahoma. TCU facing Oklahoma State for the first time as members of the same conference. Huge game for two teams with winning records at the halfway point of the season. Get ready, a good one coming up next on Fox. In the booth. You could not go down to the sideline. It is that good today. Joel Myers, Brian Baldinger, third member of our team, Jim Knox. Jim? Well, I tell you what, this Oklahoma State defense, they are ready to go because TCU is receiving the football. One of the best matchups today has to be the running attack of Oklahoma State. Joseph Randall leads the Big 12 in running the football, and TCU's number one in the defense in the Big 12. Talk to Joseph Randall before the game. He says he's up for the challenge, and a big key for him today, hold on to the football. In a game like this, so evenly matched, turnovers will be huge. Joel? All right, and especially for TCU with the way it has worked for them. These two teams started playing way back in 1915, but believe it or not, haven't seen each other for almost 20 years, and they've only matched up 22 times. And two winning programs nationwide right now. Both these teams have finished number two in the polls at the end of the season in each of the last two years. Gary Patterson two years ago, 12-1, go to the Rose Bowl, win the Rose Bowl last year, Oklahoma State, 12-1. Uh, and one. I mean, tremendous finishes by both these programs over the last two seasons. And the all-time winningest coaches at their schools. Gary Patterson, TCU, and Mike Gundy at Oklahoma State just passing his mentor and head coach, Pat Jones, last week. Yeah, he said he was really just too busy and too focused to really take it all in. But anytime you were once a quarterback here back in the 80s, and then you ascended to become the all-time winningest coach, uh, it'll make your mom feel pretty proud, and it did to Mike Gundy. Quinn Sharp will kick it away, and will the return game even be a factor with the two play stickers we have today? It is deep, and it's headed to Sky Dawson, one of the quickest for the Horn Frogs. About four yards out of the end zone. Great coverage downfield. Ashton Lemkin with a statement early on the coverage unit for Oklahoma State. So they were worried about Sky Dawson coming in. Too much coffee, guys. Come on. Too much. <laughs> so... Oklahoma State won the toss, and they deferred. Yep. They want their option to the second half. And here comes the Horned Frogs and TCU behind the redshirt freshman out of Mesquite, Texas. Boykin goes at 6'2", 215. Tucker starts in the backfield. He's been banged up recently. This time he'll just lower his shoulder and bang his way across the 20 out to the 21 for a gain of about six, almost seven. Run down by the free safety, Daytuan Lowe. 
And for Matthew Tucker, ever since the SMU game, he's been hobbled by a left knee and left uh, ankle problem. And so he's come out of each of the last four games. We'll see just what his stability is today and how effective he is. We'll also see B.J. Catalan, a true freshman out of Houston. He has seen significant time over the last three games due to the problem you were talking about. Low snap for Boykin. Nice adjustment and slings it out for a first down as it goes outside to Josh Boyce. Well, Josh Boyce is their leading receiver and uh, all-time career touchdown leader. So the offense kind of goes through him. You'll see him inside. You'll see him outside in the slot out at wide receiver. One thing about Boykin, when he steps into his throat, Joel, just watching him on tape, and he's got a he's got a laser for an arm. Now sometimes the arm motion gets a little long, almost Tebow-ish. So he's got to fight that sometimes. Yeah, they were talking about getting a little loopy when yeah, he takes loopy. it back. People said that about you off the air, Joel. A little loopy. Yeah, but at least I'm, I'm, my throwing motion's good. On first down, Boykin breaks tackles but can't spin free from Zach Craig, the extra D back. Gary got in there as well. Shamil Gary, the strong safety, had a short gain of about three. You know, it's interesting about Trevon Boykin is that when Casey Paul was the quarterback, they had injuries at the running back position, Matthew Tucker. Up until the week that Paul was suspended, he was taking reps at running back. I mean, he's that type of a ball carrier with, when he has that pigskin tucked under his arm. Well, he was their eagle. Yeah. He was their eagle guy whenever they wanted to run something different. And now he's their starting quarterback. Second and seven. Goodbye on the play fake, and it's complete. It goes out to Ladarius Brown. He put the knee down, so can't go any further than the 43. But boy, this whether it's the slot man on one side or the cushion he had on that side. Well, Ladarius Brown's just going to sit right down here in the zone. And you can see there's the long motion of Boykin, but that Ladarius Brown now, now he's a red shirt freshman along with Trevon Boykin. They came in together. But Ladarius Brown was the top ranked athlete in the state of Texas. Coming out, coming out of Waxahachie, a highly recruited player, and just getting started for the Horn Frogs. So first down to the 43. Pocket holds up well, ton of time, and it's in and out of the hands over the middle. He was looking for Can't White. Work. Yes, sophomore from DeSoto, Texas, and it'll be second in ten. Catchable ball. Well, you'll see, I think, a pretty good chemistry between Boykin and Cam White today. Boykin is from West Mesquite outside of Dallas, and uh, Cam White is from DeSoto. They play, they play with each other, against each other a lot in high school. Very familiar with one another. Boykin has hit two of his first three. That's a drop last week. Throwing for career best 332 yards. Movement up front, right side of the offensive line. Full start. Offense, number 69. Five-yard penalty. It's second down. That's Avian Collins, true freshman right tackle. Well, the key and operative word there is true because they've got 15 freshmen or first-year players starting for TCU this year. And so they've had 10 guys that they were counting on since January that are no longer part of the program, whether they've been suspended or whether they transferred or because of injury right now. So playing a lot of young players. As you mentioned, 16, they only have 11 scholarship seniors, and out of that 11, only six really play. Spread the defense, and it's dropped again, this time by Boyce. So he's missed two, but it's been two drops for Boykin. And did Boyce kind of short on that ball there, Joel? I mean, that ball was well thrown. And Boyce is too good a receiver to drop it. I think he felt inside pressure coming at him. He kind of pulled off a little bit and started looking to see who was coming. Yeah, Levy, the middle linebacker, was in his, the corner of his eye. Third and 15. Well, what an atmosphere in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Ooh. Last week we were at Norman. This week, Stillwater. Tough to beat. I think it's going to be tough in Norman tonight. Now, need 15 for the first down. Oh, there for the taking. Almost picked off, and it should have been as it falls incomplete. It was Zach Craig. Uh, he had a perfect break on the ball. I think it was Joe Mitchell. Yeah, safety. it was Joe Mitchell. Yeah, Joe Mitchell has got a great break on the ball. And 
really Boykin was late with this. He took him right to him. Mitchell's the backup outside linebacker in there on uh, third and long. And uh, really, he was looking to the end zone for a pick six. Charlie Moore. The wide receiver waits. It's dropped. It's put on the ground. And then Ethan Perry finally gets it away. And what a break for TCU. Down there to pull it in, Deontay Gray, who's also brought back punts for them. So great special teams work both ways after Perry bobbled. It looks pretty later, doesn't it? A 57-yard punt. And now deep in Cowboy territory when they get it for the first time. It's the football for the first time. They are fourth in scoring. Now welcome back to Stillwater. Joel Myers, Lowe, Brian Baldinger, Jim Knox. And after the 57-yard punt, most of it on the ground. It's at the five. Good seam up the middle. Big run. Joseph Randall, the junior from Wichita, leads the Big 12, eighth in the nation, 127 yards a game. This is brought down by Hackett. Now, our Academy right stuff player, Devontae Fields. Is he going to be able to impact this game? Nothing there on second and short. No gain on the carry. Well, Devontae Fields is a freshman, true freshman at Arlington, Texas, Arlington Martin High School. He leads the Big 12 in sacks and in tackles for losses, and he's doing it without one of the better rushers in the in the conference, Stanley Maponga, who's been out with a foot injury. Boy, opposites attract today. TCU such a good defensive unit but against Oklahoma State. TCU wins that battle. Penetration into the backfield. It was David Johnson cleaning up. Fields was back there. Well, they are number seven in the nation in rush defense giving up just 92 yards a game only three yards a carry there's a guy that we were just talking about the right stuff player Devonte fields who got off the block and threw that body in there and stopped him on third and one quinn sharp leads the nation in punting average and wobbles one out they'll stay away from it and it takes a tcu roll so like a good wedge shot, hits at the 45, goes out of bounds at about the 42. Only a 29-yard punt from our Academy right stop player. Not right. a good start, though, for Quinn Sharp and Oklahoma State. Well, I mean, he's the leading punter in the nation. I mean, from net punt average, they've only given up a total of 36 punt return yards all year. And Quinn Sharp out of Mansfield, Texas, is the biggest reason why. You can see him. He's just shaking his head at himself because Mike Gundy knows that that's an unusual. He's a guy that has boomed 60 and 70 yard punts routinely this season. So exceptional field position at the 42. Blanken spreads it. Three on the short side of the field. Here comes the heat. And throws it away as he took a shot and a big shot at the end of the play from Nigel Nicholas just to let him know he was in the neighborhood. Well, you know, when you have an empty backfield like there is, five wide receivers right now, you see Nigel Nicholas just beat the right tackle. Avion Collins there clean. And they have struggled with two freshmen playing tackle. Uh, Faboulage on the left side and Collins on the right side, and Nicholas beat him clean. That's what you worry about when you're in an empty set and no extra blocking. So Boykin now. Two for six after getting rid of that just in time. And nothing doing for B.J. Catalan. True freshman from Houston on his first carry of the day. In fact, he lost two. Yeah, Alex Elkins, second on the team in tackles, comes blitzing through on that play. And they're just going to be cheating up right in here. Right through the gap right now. You can see just that's a run blitz. That's a fire zone blitz where both inside linebackers, uh, Levy and Elkins, cross. And Elkins came clean. I will mention all Big 12 last year for the Cowboys. Senior from Archdale, North Carolina. Gonna be third and a dozen. Three on the wide side this time for Boykin. And he's got a single and overshoots an open receiver, Cam White. Well, Cam White is the guy that he threw a touchdown pass through for the opening touchdown of the game last week in their loss to Texas Tech. And I didn't think that he really ran all the way through that route. And I think the wide receiver coach is telling him that right there. I think Boykin was thrown to a spot. I thought he kind of slowed down a little I, bit. I agree. He did let up. Moore waits for the Perry punt. And what a wasted opportunity early for Great GCU. Field. Plus territory. You start on the opposition side of the 50. You better get something out of it. End over ender. 
Didn't need much, though, in a short field. Man, it's Charlie Moore with a fair catch. Back near the 15, call it about the 11, actually. So, Oklahoma State dodging one there, didn't they? Cowboys get it back. We return to Stillwater. Right stuff, low price every day. And by Ford, it's the built Ford Tough Truck event at your Texas Ford dealer. Ford, the best in Texas. Welcome back once again to Stillwater, Oklahoma. I know we're close to Halloween, but usually when we come to college campuses, that doesn't make a difference. No, not really. Come on. Saturday afternoon, it's time to get your yayas out. <laughs> it's at the 10. Uh, the second series for the Cowboys. Shadow cross should be picked. It is, and it's a pick six touchdown. TCU on the board. Well, the safety is one of the leading defensive players on the team, and that's a deflection right off of Stewart. And really, West Lunt was a little bit late and high with that ball, the deflection right into Olabo's hands. Here's Olabo right in the middle of the field, just playing a, a tip drill. Got a little help there from Sam Carter, the nickel back, and TCU's defense, which they're known for, makes the first big play. Overgrown splits the uprights. So we talked about the TCU defense and, and the way they can take the ball away. That's been missing for Oklahoma State. Led the nation to takeaways last year, so a pick six right away. Well, this is their 15th interception of the year right now. You can see it. it's behind Stewart, and there's Olibode right there, right in the right spot. And I was just going to say that the secondary is really good here at TCU. A lot of speed and athletes. And you see Carter puts a hit on Stewart. It allows him to walk into the end zone for the first touchdown of the game, but Gary Patterson has made a name building defenses here at TCU. And they only had 10 receptions all year last year. They've got 15 already this year. And there it is. I mean, can this defense, the winners of the Mountain West last year, can they come into the Big 12 and play with the big boys? <laughs> Gary Patterson, I like it. he got a little sweat going already. Well, he loves it. I like lathering up early. Yeah. You know me. <laughs> and he's in the sun. Yes. In the sun, it's it's like about 60, 65, basically. In the shade, though, it's more like 45 to 50. There's a huge difference. Short one's going to be taken by Justin Gilbert outside of the five. He's got an alley over to the right side. Good return across the 30, making a miss. And, boy, field position is what they needed. Put it on the ground. It's loose. But Oklahoma State gets it. I'm, no, still loose. Did TCU have it? They're saying they do. It was there, and it is. TCU's football. Wow. Justin Gilbert put it down. So Olabode, who came up with the interception, the big six. He's a catalyst once again on specials. So the kicker, Obercrumb comes up with it. The ball is stripped out right there by Gamble. He just punches it out, strips it. Uh, that's exactly what you do, just popping a balloon here. And the kicker, Obercrow, comes up with it. But there are the two freshman. Cowboys that had the football, and they let it squirt right by him. Well, look at this effort here by Gamble to get that ball out. Perfect strip by Gamble. Wow. So another short field for TCU. Man, false start on the Horned Frogs. Five-yard penalty, it's first down. Fabu Luge is the left tackle, the sophomore from Euless, Texas. He's called for the markoff. So the fumble. And all of a sudden, boy, I thought they'd have field position because don't forget, Oklahoma State's first two series started their 5 and 10, so it looked like now they've got it to the 40, something to work but with. But how many kickers recover fumbles in any level of football? On first and 15 on the play fake. Boykin holds on, taking a serious shot for about three. Mazda game break time as we check in with Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen. Guys? Lots going on in the college football world. Marcus and I will be here all day long to keep you updated. Let's check in on the big one between Texas Tech and Kansas State. And what does Seth Nagy do, Marcus? He throws touchdowns, but Kansas State rarely gives up big plays, Kevin, and they give up right here. Yeah, 7 nothing. Tech on top. Thank you, guys. Well, we know Texas Tech is going to score some points, regardless of who they face. Well, that squirted out. 
Is it a lateral? I didn't believe so. It looked like it was a forward pass. It picked up alertly by Sky Dawson, but from our angle, it, it, it looked like a forward pass. It looked like it did. It looked like it went forward from the release. Remember, it's where the ball's released with Boykin. It looked forward, but really the line judge is looking right down the line of scrimmage, and so the play wasn't blown dead, so good job of just being alert. And it looked like it slipped out of the hand of the quarterback, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, here's Boykin here, and you can see just a read option fake. I said he's got a loopy motion, but that's a little bit more of a loopy motion. I can't remember a ball coming out that funky from a quarterback in college football and this it, year. It was a forward pass. Yeah. You can see he threw it at the 47 and landed at about the 45, 46. So they get a break because they get about four yards on the play. Third and almost 11. The grab made, and boy, Catalina is hit immediately. Again, the Oklahoma State defense coming up big, bailing out. Well, the specials and the offensive unit right now. Liddell Johnson making the stop. Well, that's what you call tackling the catch. And so another big stop here for Oklahoma State. We've seen two of them uh, off of TCU's great field position. We said coming into today, field position would be such a big part of this game. It has. It affected that pick six that Oliver returned for touchdown. Perry with another one. It looks more like a kickoff than a punt. And it'll go into the end zone. So after starting with the ball at the 42 and 46 of Oklahoma State, TCU gets nothing from it. But their defense gets points, doesn't it? Olaboat with the big pick six and an early lead for the Horn Frogs. They turned the ball over twice. One went into the end zone. Olaboat taking a short one. About 15 yards on the interception and score. Now, the key is, is Oklahoma State dead last in turnover margin against one of the best in the Big 12 in TCU. How long does it take Wes Lunt to get his timing and rhythm down? Hey, we, we Last time he played, we saw him six weeks ago against University of Louisiana. So he's going to be a little rusty here at game speed. He's got a single, throwing it over the safety, and well overthrown. Barrett on the coverage as he was trying to hook up with Isaiah Anderson. So Lunt in there due to the injury, and Walsh is supposedly out for the year, although later in the week his dad said he'd be gone three to five weeks, yeah. but the head coach Mike Gundy said it'd be difficult for him to come back with a knee injury and coming off a career best day for him, throwing for better than 400 yards last week. And what a gutsy performance last week against Texas Tech, playing 70 snaps with a bad knee. Little screen action. Randall, can he make a miss? No. Good play in the open field. All about again as we check in with Jim Knox. About J.W. Walsh, you know, he's down on the sidelines behind the bench with crutches. He pleaded his case with Mike Gundy. Gundy usually doesn't let players down here with crutches because the sidelines are so tight. But he said he's down here to help Wes Lunt out in case needed. Yeah, that, that is a team rule that Jim talks about. And we talked about that with Mike Gundy. Now on third down, Lunt throwing it into the ground because he was hit and hit big time. He well, was decked by Chucky Hunter, the sophomore from West Monroe, Louisiana. That's a big guy to land on you. Well, he is, and the thing is, can Lunt take those kind of hits today? I mean, I talked to him. He's wearing a knee brace on his left knee. You know, he's not sure. He's never played with a knee brace before. He's not sure if he can take those kind of hits. We'll monitor it as the day goes on, as will Mike Dunn. Much better. Wow. Well, the nation's leader at 49 yards overall, and Dawson puts it on the ground, comes back and gets it. Huge break for TCU because Oklahoma State was right next door. It's put down at the 17, so a big turnaround in field position. Well, this is what uh, Quinn Sharp can do. And look, right there, Sky Dawson's looking right back into a strong sun. And so it's tough. It's tough to look up there that long. And you can see that they're right on top of them. So that's what we're used to seeing from Quinn Sharp. He changes field position. It's been a big factor in Oklahoma State having a leading offense in college football. They only keep it empty. Now they bring Tucker into the backfield to join Boykin. First down for the 17. And Tucker slams it over the right side. Past the 20 to the 21, running into the strong side backer, Sean Lewis. 
Well, the running back situation at TCU looked great coming into the season. They had Wayman James, they had Tucker, they had the freshman Catalan, and slowly, because of injuries, uh, it's just been evaporating. And so Tucker playing with a bad left knee, left ankle, he's trying to get as much out of it on this artificial surface as he can right now. Second, well at six and a half. And it's Tucker, not much available, sliding off left tackle. Brought down by the free safety, Daytuan Lowe. Some teams just know how to win on the road. And Gary Patterson's teams, they're undefeated on the road this year. In fact, their two losses have come at Eamon Carter. 3-0 on the road. In fact, they've won 14 in a row on the road. So it's going back to 2009 since the last time they lost on the road. He said they concentrate better. They focus and they concentrate better. They get in the hotel room. Fewer distractions. You know, up here in Stillwater than back in Fort Worth. They also have a video test the night before the game. They're a disciplined group with Gary Patterson. Third and about five. Middle of the field's there, and he's got a first down. Catch is made, and coming across to grab it, Cam White. Sophomore from DeSoto, Texas. That was a fastball. Good I mentioned, for 12. So I mentioned these two guys have some chemistry. You know, I mean, uh, they grew up not far apart from one another, West Mesquite to DeSoto, and this is a good throw. You can see, really, just going to break open right now, Cam White, right over the middle. You can see that. Side right, on. <laughs> right by the umpire's <laughs> ear. <laughs> Probably heard that ball whistle by him. Well, how about the throwing motion? we got to look at that a little bit later. It drops down now. It's a little, down. Li little Lewis Tion to him. And Matthew Stafford's dropped down a lot for the Lions. There's a good run up the middle. That's Catalan breaking tackles, the freshman from Houston. And look out. Big game for Catalan. Inside the 25, knocked out near the 20. Breaking tackles, that's it. He busted some tackles. Well, you know, he's only 5'9 and 185, but you can see him gather as he's being contacted. And the legs never stop. So you're going to get him right here just coming off underneath on underneath handoff. Picks up a block from Matthew Tucker. And there's the hit off two guys. And this was the number one ranked uh, back coming out of the state of Texas, all-purpose back. He's a good receiver as well. Coming out last year, everybody was after B.J. Catalan. He leads TCU in rushing yards, coming in fourth in receptions. Tucker's back in there. And Boykin making a miss, but only good for a couple of yards. So Catalan coming off 72 yards uh, against Texas Tech, 79 against Baylor, 86 Iowa State. He's got more of a rhythm, believe it or not, than Tucker, who's been hurt. And, and just think about TCU and their future here, Joel, because Boykin is a redshirt freshman. B.J. Catalan is a freshman, right? So Gary Patterson is, you know, they don't, it's always the next guy up, right? They don't make excuses for suspensions or injuries or transfers or anything. But the fact is, these guys are learning on the job, and they're learning pretty quickly. And they got transfers coming in. Yeah, they do. It's a big time one for next year. Andre Dean, transfer from UCLA this year. Sat out last season in the backfield for pass protection. It's available out on the edge. Making a miss. Yes. Touchdown TCU. Ladarius Brown. How about another freshman? <laughs> How about another redshirt freshman, Ladarius Brown, who is their biggest receiver? I mean, just a huge size to him at 6'4, 220. Just working on the outside, just a little out route. But here's what he could do after. Breaks the uh, the tackle right there of Kevin Peterson. And TCU's coming in here and shocking the Cowboys. Overgrown for the point after. So points off a takeaway. The quick pick six by the free safety. And now a six-play, 83-yard drive. Big, big play of that, though. Don't forget about the long run. Yards after contact. Freshman B.J. Catalan. Brown finishes it off. And all TCU early in Stillwater. yards on uh, the scoring pass and one thing they do is hang on to the football number one of the nation in time of possession which and you and I've talked about it can be the most misleading stat in all of football it can be Joel except if that's what you want to do I mean the way Bill Snyder wants to do it at Kansas State play keep away from the, the higher scoring offense in football it's not a bad method to keep the score down Obercrum well, kick it away. Gilbert put it on the ground, and Jeremy Smith, it'll be Gilbert, and he'll stay in the end zone. Just about three yards in. 
So Oklahoma State, it's 14-0. They'd like to have a one on the board, as in one first down. They haven't. They don't have a first down yet. Well, they haven't converted. And give credit to Gary Patterson's defense, and he calls the defenses. And then Wes Lunt, you know, he's trying to get back into a groove right now after sitting out for six weeks. And Mike Gundy told us, he goes, Wednesday's practice, Wes Lunt wasn't good. You know, so they kind of got their fingers crossed that he can get back to that form where he threw from 400 yards against Arizona. Now Randall to the backfield. Man on the dump off. Little kick out. Wide receiver helped him. Man, good yardage. Josh Stewart was the key to the play. A little sealed. And he gets more than five, almost six. Well, one thing that Oklahoma State's receivers have to do is block. I mean, they've got at least 12 receivers that are up and active today. And they're not getting the ball. they got to be blocking downfield, and they work on it every day. Reset the fullback and a nice jump cut by Joseph Randall for the first first down of the game up to the 36. Well, the key really for Oklahoma State to get back into the game is Joseph Randall. He leads the Big 12 in rushing. And really, Mike Gundy has been on him. Like, he needs a consistent performance every week from the way he did against Texas when he had 198 yards rushing. It'll be Randall. He dives ahead for about four up to the 40. We saw him two weeks ago in Kansas, and, and overall, they felt like they weren't physical enough. Not just Randall, because he only had about 80 yards rushing. All right, here he is. He's got two fullbacks in front of him right now as lead blockers. Almost like an unbalanced line, and it works. Randall's got a first down across the midfield strike. Boy, they stacked it, didn't they, on the short side of the field? Well, this is smart now because they're taking the ball out of the freshman Westlund's hands. And look at this. You have stacked fullbacks. There's a formation you don't see much, but take the pressure off the young quarterback, give it, and put it on Joseph Randall. On the play fake. Oh, a little gadget play. And it works. Wide open on the outside. Austin Hayes inside the 20. Down to the 10 and popped out of bounds with a flag on a block in the back where they didn't need it. Up at about the 14-yard line. Charlie Moore tried to throw a block downfield. They were long gone. Didn't need to do it. No, they didn't. But it'll be a spot foul. So it'll be from right. the infraction. So they're not going to lose all the yards. But great, great deception on the play. And Austin Hayes, a freshman out of San Antonio, was wide open. So a little flea flicker action early trying to get on the board. There is no foul on the play for a block in the back. Pick it up. First down. Yeah, Charlie Moore looked back, and, and I only saw the tail end of the play. But the flea flicker first. Well, here it is. And we get the ball here to Smith. Throw back. Good job by Lunt. And then you're going to see Austin Hayes just kind of lulling him to sleep. You see the go route took the coverage with him, and it left Austin Hayes wide open underneath. Yeah, we saw the corner. Jason Verrett just looking at the backfield. On first and goal, it'll be Randall spinning inside the five as he lunges to the four in the arms of Kenny Kane, former defensive player of the week in the Big 12 after their win over Virginia. Well, this is the type of performance they need from Randall here. He's taking charge of this drive. They're moving the ball, and they're giving him all the extra blockers in the backfield right now to get him clean to the line of scrimmage. He's got seven carries, 33 yards, and again, they go jumbo over to the right side for Randall, and it doesn't work. Runs up the back. They had Staley and Seaton in there. And the fullbacks down. The number one offense in college football. Over 600 yards a game. They don't have a 600 yards a game, and they don't have a point here in the first quarter. So this is highly unusual for Oklahoma State, no matter who's playing quarterback. But we've also talked about strength of schedule, and now it's going to get tough in the second half of the season for them. Now all the big boys are waiting for them right now. Third and goal. And it's a low throw. Is it a pick or is it a trap? It's a trap. The receiver never turned around. Like he and Lunt weren't on the same page. Wow, so Carter tried to trap, get it, before it was in the turf. Gary Patterson wants to know if they need to look at this. We'll take a look here. Yeah, balls, yeah. it bounced. Short skip to Sam Carter. The nickel back. Really, you're right, Joe. I mean, there was just no communication and timing between Lunt and whoever it is he was thrown to. They're going to review it, but yeah. it bounced. Of an incomplete pass is under further review. So they're trying to get points on about a 22 yard field goal attempt with Quinn Sharp. Two of the best kickers in the nation today, and Quinn Sharp and Jaden Obercrome. 
but it looked like it bounced. Yeah, it bounced, I thought, right there. Yep. Just uh, the nose of the ball. Then he gets his hands underneath it. So I think it was a pretty definitive look. But it, the hands were on the side. Yeah. Yeah, it skipped right into him. There's a skip in there. It's a, you know, if you're skipping stones off the water, you know, like you used to do as a kid, it's a small skip. But this should be the quickest review of the season. <laughs> okay. Which means it'll take eight but minutes. But even so you could tell the, the, the right there, the body language of Sam Carter. Like he tried. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed in complete pass. And that kind of confirms what we talked about with Wes Lunt and his wide receivers. Not on the same page this early in the game after a long layoff. A long layoff. I mean, they said that he was, you know, taking reps in practice because the twos get reps along with the ones. But it's different in practice than it is in the game right now. And right now, the game looks just a little bit fast for Wes. It'll be a 22-yard field goal attempt. Sharp gets into it. And Oklahoma State is on the board. They finally got a first down. They stalled on first and goal, but still. Nine plays covering 70 yards. And the last tw 22 from the 11th field goal of the season for Quinn Sharp, the senior from Mansfield, Texas. So they moved in a hurry. Time of possession, not something we talk about when it comes to Oklahoma State because of the rhythm, their tempo is our scoring drive. Well, it's fast break 98, football. Yeah, 98 seconds. How, how many snaps can they clip off? I mean, that's, that's a huge part of what has made them successful and why they end up doing a lot of push-ups on Saturday afternoon at uh, Boone Pickett Stadium. Here. So 40 seconds left in the opening 15 minutes of play. Sky Dawson is going to be going back deep. So points off a turnover. And boy, did they succeed that way last year. Mike Gundy's squad. But they had more veteran leadership on both sides of the ball. Well, they only have a total of six takeaways all year right now. So they're way down in turnover margin the way they've turned it over. Good one. Takes a return game out. Dawson, one of the quickest we'll see on the field today, well over his head. And now TCU will have it at their own 25. So TCU dominating in the opening 15 minutes of play and, and that's the case once again so far today but well, they're a good they're a good program and look if, if they didn't lose Casey Paha who knows if they don't lose to Iowa State if they don't lose to Texas Tech like they did a week ago but I can see this Trevon Boykin is improving I mean what he, about that throwing motion <laughs> well it's a little loopy oh, loopy they said they'll work with him on the in the offseason pretty soon it's going to be Tucker down up. like dan quisenberry they give to tucker and a good play from behind up front by james castleman as we check in with jim knox joe bryan and baldinger's exactly right trevon bullikin is improving in fact i talked to him before the game he said since starting two games this game has really slowed down for him he says now he can definitely go through his progressions he reads a lot better than he did a couple of games ago and he feels poised out there why does he always agree with you does he think i'm going to send it down more if he agrees with you well he it's the analyst joel okay <laughs> just get over there and tell us what the score is in the down and distance <laughs> my analyst told me yes so that's the final snap of I've the first rolled, quarter. I've trained him well. <laughs> I wasn't talking about the guy in the booth when I referred to an analyst. <laughs> it's an early 14-3 lead for the Horn Frogs. They are ready to play today in Stillwater. Good conference matchup as we continue with TCU and Oklahoma State. It. And, you know, it's interesting talking to Gary Patterson. He said his chief competition out there with recruiting athletes is Oklahoma right. State right now. They go head-to-head. -head. He knows a lot of these guys on Oklahoma State because he's lost some of them. Of course, they've won some from Oklahoma State as well. A real battle for recruiting blue chippers, uh, especially in the state of Texas. Boykin's got Tucker in the backfield. But he's looking at second and long. He's 5 of 10 throwing. And on the out... He misses an open Josh Boyce. Pretty good blitz that time, Joel, from Oklahoma State getting pressure on Boykin. They've come with a overloaded uh, pressure here, but here they come. So they bring two extras. They bring six men right here. And you can see Boykin 
I guess it's just the breeze of the linebacker <laughs> going by and knocked it down. But it affected the throw. It's a good song, Leonard Skinner. <laughs> they call it the breeze. Third and eight from the 27. See, I got that reference from. Here comes the heat from the outside. Battered up into the air and again. The D-line making the presence felt. Cooper Bassett at 6'5", 270. Timing it beautifully. Yeah, they run a twist stunt inside with Cooper Bassett inside. So he's going to come just on the loop right now. There it is. So, so, that's a way to read a passing lane. Well, you know, if you can't get there, get your hands up, right? I mean, that's what they teach you. Third punt of the game now. Breathe and Perry. Low line drive, returnable tie for Charlie Moore. Making the first one miss. And good job downfield at about the 20, 21 yard line. Fending off the block, it's Jonathan Anderson after the 55 yard punt by Perry. So now, Oklahoma State with only three points on the board. Three first down over the first 16 minutes of the game. Well, you know, this offense, sometimes in college football, those numbers can be screwed a little bit. I mean, they put up uh, over 700 yards against uh, University of Louisiana. Big numbers against Savannah, but only 20 points a couple weeks ago at Kansas. Kansas took Texas right to the brink today. Charlie Weiss having the defense playing pretty well here lately. But it's a valid point. Who yeah. did you put those right. numbers up against? First down from the 21. Lee Gadget, you got it. Here comes Josh Stewart. He's out on the edge. Gets a block from the lineman. Not much of one, but enough for a first down. Jason Verrett getting away from that big lug out there. The left tackle, Parker Graham. Well, it's interesting in Josh Stewart because last week with his, his old, uh, you know, high school teammate, J.W. Walsh, he had 13 catches. But they've been shutting him down today with Wes Lunt. I don't know that Lunt has the same relationship with Josh Stewart, their leading receiver, as J.W. did. So they had to find a way to get him the ball. And here he is in the slot right now. Here he comes. Bubble screen deflected. Good read up front as well. Uh, that's uh, John Coots, yep. who's starting for Stansley Maponga today. And he's going to get his hands up right here, just on the outside. See, he can't get there, so what do you do? You get your hands up, get in the passing lane. That's one way to slow those bubble screens down that you see in college football. Second and ten. Randall can't turn the corner. Good pursuit down the line. Fields, as the coaches said, kind of lulls you to sleep, but he makes plays. Yeah, but you know, when you lull guys to sleep the way Devontae Fields does, it's it's not because there's not a lack of effort. He's just a smooth athlete. Right. And he's a lot more than just a pass rusher. Evidence by taking Randall down from the backside like that. Tells you he's kind of a glider. Yeah. He knows what he needs to make up ground. Now they need eight. It's Randall. Yeah. Maybe the rust more than anything else for well, West Lund there. You know, Joel, it's like baseball. It's like golf. You throw with your legs, right, with your lower body. And if you're not sure if you can plant, push off, that ball's going to die like it did. I mean, he's, he won the starting quarterback job over J.W. Walsh because he had a better arm. But you see that ball's dying, and I think it has something to do with that left leg. Dawson waits for the punt from Sharp and calls for the fair catch. So Oklahoma State now 0 for 4 on third downs, but they're facing one of the best defensive units in the country. So the redshirt freshman, Travon Boykin, and the Horn Frogs already up by 11. They get it back. We return to Stillwater. GCU gets the football offensively for the fifth time. They've had one touchdown, three punts, and nothing doing from the running back. Catalan can't get away. In fact, B.J. Catalan losing about three after he gave up ground trying to get out of the tackle. Back to the 15 it goes. Now, welcome back to Stillwater. Joel Myers, Brian Baldinger, and Jim Knox down to the sideline. And one turnover really the difference in this game. And that was the pick six yeah. by Oldeboe. 
Now, if you're going to try to run the ball inside, you've got to run against Calvin Barnett. And uh, he's a load. He's playing over the right guard right now, Blaze Fultz, the strongest player, but also a guy that's hobbled by ankle knee injuries. They're rocking on the left side. No flag, though. And the completion out past the 20. It goes to Josh Boyce. He's put down, and they give him up to the 24. Short of the first down by three, almost four, in the arms of Sean Lewis. And I like what I saw from Boykin on that throw because Oklahoma State came with some overloaded pressure right up the middle, and uh, Boykin stood in there, you know, looked right down the gun barrel and delivered the ball on time. Key third down for Bill position. Didn't flinch at all. Now, this is where Boykin can get out of the edge make plays himself. They spread the defense. He'll throw for it and threw it right to the defensive back, Daytuan Lowe, who wasn't looking. Well, he missed. He walks the receiver. Well, he had uh, Sky Dawson sitting down at the first down marker, and he just overthrew it. And so, I mean, here's Sky Dawson. He's just going to run a little stop route on the outside. There it is. And Whoops. <laughs> well, he threw it to the defensive back. He thought Dawson was coming in. I think so. So that's Daytuan Lowe, who's... They're a leading tackler back there, but also a headhunter from safety. Back to back three and outs with a punt. As Charlie Moore waits for it from Perry. And Moore, what was he doing? He's lucky to hang on to the football. Fairly cavalier and casual, wasn't it? Sure was. But he's not getting in an offense, so I think he wanted to try to make a play from the punt return position. And Oklahoma State just struggling in offense right now. That's. Harlebo's right there who took the pick six back, the opening score of the game, and that ball stripped out of Justin Gilbert's hands on a kickoff. And right now, West Lund is, he's rusty. He's just rusty after sitting with a bad knee for the last six weeks. Freshman to begin with. We well, saw the interception that was returned for a score. Lunt is three for nine now for 46 yards. And they get him going. He's hit as he released it. And dropped in the backfield by Chucky Hunter. Once again, just a straight push up the middle by Hunter. You know, one thing that Wes Lunt has to do is read the defense as he's receiving the ball. They run two different plays sometimes. A screen one side, a stop to the other. He's got to read it. It'll be Randall. And he takes some heat off the quarterback. You could hear it all the way up here. Sure could. It's about six on the carry. They really haven't made the commitment to the ground game. The one time they did, they got three out of it. And remember what they did. They were putting a lot of extra blockers in the backfield around West Lunt. Need four to keep the drive alive. They have yet to convert a third down. 0 for 4. Well, one thing about TCU is they are pressing the receivers on the outside. So they're not giving them a lot of breathing room right now. Randall in motion. Middle of the field. It's wide open for Josh Stewart. Josh Stewart across the midfield stripe. And he's got a first down inside the 40. He had 13 catches last week for J.W. Walsh. And there is a flag down. Let's see what happens. Back inside the 20. Personal foul. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number 36. 15-yard penalty at the end of the run. First down. Yeah, tack it on. A personal foul on Hasley. Well, Hasley comes on a blitz this time. Here he is right up the middle. They emptied both inside linebackers all right to the head. Yeah, helmet yeah, to helmet. Yeah, that's, that's, that's an easy call, but it's impressive because it's the best throw by Lunt today, and look what he had to do to make it. So first down to the 24, trailing by 11. Randall makes a miss. Into the secondary, paddles his way inside the 20, down to the 18. Well, sometimes guys will say they didn't get into the game until they took a shot. Maybe that's the case with Lunt now. Well, here's just a little pick route on the outside. A fake pick, actually. Now, that's that's what it looked like it was going to be a rubber. Got me faked out. It's actually a really good design that time from Todd Monk and the offensive coordinator. Second, a little more than three. Jeremy Smith in the backfield, throw the fade, but boy, the wide receiver Moore was all locked up with a defensive back, Jason Verrett on that side, who's tied for the lead in the Big 12 with four interceptions so far. Well, he's having a good season, Verrett. You know, the four interceptions, but 
Uh, also, 11 tackles last week against Texas Tech. Uh, just doing a good job of tackling the catch a week ago. Red zone problems. Let's see. Inside the 20, if they can get the four yards they need. Ton of time. And it is complete, but short of the first down. At about the 16-yard line, going to Charlie Moore. Well, over the last three games coming in, and they failed on a first and goal here, they have really struggled. Only six touchdowns coming in over 13 red zone possessions. Yeah, but that's good defense right there, Joel. And Gary Patterson told us, he goes, make teams in the Big 12 kick field goals. Don't give them touchdowns. So to Gary Patterson, even though they gave up the big play to Walsh, he's forcing a field goal here. But that's what burned Gary Patterson last week. Yeah. Six field goals against Texas Tech. Yeah, but it was... The last third down at the end of the game, he says he'd like to have that defensive call back that allowed uh, Tech to win that game in overtime. 34-yard attempt from Quinn Sharp. Does he hook it in? Yes! I wish my draw was that subtle. It's good from 34. Man, it's an eight-point ball game. So 9.22 to play. And don't forget the shot that Wes Lunt took. It was the big play on the drive. He got it from the D-line. He got it from the linebacker. Man, Welcome. it results in three more points. Welcome to quarterback play. Do you know what it means to have someone's back? To have another life depend on you and only you? Welcome back once again to Stillwater. Last week in Norman. This week in Stillwater, old school. And that's what it's about. When you come into the old, the old Big 8, Big 12 campuses, we really appreciate coming to these sites. Well, I love it. You know, we were in Norman, Oklahoma last week. It was a great scene. It's going to be a tremendous yes. scene later tonight, right uh, right down the road in, o in Norman. I may go to the game tonight. <laughs> we're here. We're not you leaving. You double dip, Joe. Why not? You're a football fan. Boyce is back with Dawson. And another good kick from Quinn Sharp. So it'll come to the 25. Time for a monster game break as we check in with Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen, the latest guys. Joel, Oregon just frightening today, taking on Colorado and watching Anthony Thomas. Fields the punt, turns his back on the defense, Marcus. You gotta have moxie, you gotta have nerve, and most of all, you have to have talent. And DAT has it all, utilizing his feet down the sideline. Amazing. 76 yards for the touchdown. Wait a minute. It's halftime. It's 56 to nothing. Oregon over Colorado at the half, guys. Thank, thank you, Kevin. I, I think it's the uniforms, actually. Yeah, well, I really do. We did that game <laughs> last year. It sounded like very similar to a year ago. Blanken, I talked about when you needed four getting out of the edge. Well, that time was first and ten. He didn't turn the corner. Dropped by Shamil Gary, the strong safety. Boy, Chip Kelly and that program. <laughs> And they win, and they drop in the BCS rankings. How Go about figure. That? Yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see. You know, obviously, Kansas State right now in a real Big 12 fight at the moment with Texas Tech. We'll see what uh, Florida does later tonight. Uh, that number two and number three spot could be in a real flux after this weekend. Second and just about 10. Boykin, it's available for Ladarius Brown. And then he lost his footing across the 30, out to the 31. Now there's some great matchups, and one that almost turned into the biggest shock so far this season. Texas scored in the final 25 seconds to escape with a win in Lawrence. Texas Tech late in the first half on the road to K-State, up by seven. Back to what I was talking about, though. Oregon turned it off last week. Yeah. They give up a couple of late scores. They turn it off offensively, and they're penalized for showing sportsmanship. Well, it's their speed is second to none in the country. Can they match up with Alabama and some teams in the SC? in the trenches, but their speed on the perimeter is as good as any. It'll be third and a little less than five. Extra pass rusher coming. Borkin slowed down and throws it away. He's outside of the tackle box and threw it over the head. He didn't have a choice of Cam White. You want a Cam White, you can see. Take it upfield. Yeah. Leave. Well, he's got to help him out. You know, when he gets outside the pocket, Lindell Johnson with another good play chasing him down. But really, no, no receiver went to help out Boykin, as you mentioned, Joel. And uh, he was trying to buy as much time as he can. Charlie Moore waits. Perry with the punt, a good one. And Moore spinning away. 
He's got a little lane and goes down. Good field position because Oklahoma State has been deep in their own territory throughout the afternoon. They get it this time at their own 32 after the 40-yard punt and 11-yard return. Fox's Foxtoberfest. It continues. Matchup tonight, game three of the World Series. Legends born in October. The series shifting to Comerica, Detroit. Our coverage will all start at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 on the Pacific. And are the Tigers going to make a series of it? Tonight's game will tell us. Well, their bats got to wake up, you know, if they're going to get back into and tighten this thing up right now because they couldn't hit in San Francisco. Play fake for Randall. Middle of the field, it's Josh Stewart. Does he overthrow him? No, he's got it at the 30. It's a first down, and the Cowboys are cooking. Well, Stewart's getting involved in the game now, and that ball was cut loose. That's off play action fake that time. So he buys a little bit of time off play action, and then Stewart beat Olibo there in the middle of the field. Randall on first down. Not much. Maybe a half a yard. There's the, the play action fake right now, and you can see Lunt had time, and this is why he won the job, because he can cut the ball loose. Uh, Mike Gundy thinks that by time he graduates here, his arm will be every bit as strong as Brandon Whedon, who's now starting for the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, it was interesting, the comparison, because he's just a freshman. Yeah. So well, he's right now at 60, 70 percent of where Whedon was, but give him a couple of years. Well, the arm gets stronger as you keep throwing. It's a lateral. Now Randall can throw it. He will wide open. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. Blake Jackson waiting. There's a flag on the play. They're bringing it back. I like the call, though. I like the execution. Offense, number 58. 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. Call it on the tackle. Daniel Koenig. Tough break. Well, it was the right execution. And what you said first, Joel, was the ball was a lateral. And that was the whole key. It was thrown behind the line of scrimmage. And then Randall, who knew that he could throw the ball that well? Randall's going to come in motion here. And he's, he's going backwards. So now you get that. And you get the big throw to Blake Jackson. It looked good from here. But the right tackle, guilty of the infraction. Takes seven, or at least six off the board. First penalty of the day. Bad, bad timing for Oklahoma State. Now, middle of the field, no safety, and well overthrown. There is going to be a flag. They were holding up Austin Hayes. It's Jason Verrett on the coverage, and it looks like a defensive holding call. Before the pass, holding defense number two. A 10 yard penalty automatic first down. Well, Jason Verrett guilty of the hold here he is on the outside and yeah, he's got his jersey it's pretty he's trying to hide the hold on the outside against austin hayes the freshman pretty good call 643 left in the half and an eight-point ball game bunch it was stewart going to that side randall huge hold up the middle making a miss gets the first down inside the 20 to the 18. kenny kane finally got to him with the other backer Hasley, but it's a pickup of 12. Well, it's a good jump cut that time by Joseph Randall after he cleared the line of scrimmage. He's going to get up here, and then he's going to make this cut. All right, he's got to make the safety miss. There he is. He makes the safety miss to pick up the yards. Randall again waits, hits it. Show patience, spins down to the 10. Well, I like the way, almost like they wash out the side, Baldy, and as a former offensive lineman, he doesn't run himself out of the play. He waits for the crease. No, nah, he's patient on that play. And right now, the offense has got some balance. you got the big play from Lunt down the field. You know, then you get a little mix of Randall in here, and all at a fire, five-alarm fire pace. Second and three from the 11. It's Smith weaving his way, and he's short the first down. Outside of the nine, needs a yard and a half. Hackett wrapped him and pushed him back. Now the key here to TCU's defense is getting off the field on third down. They're fourth in the country, getting off the field 26% of the time. They've been good today. Gary Patterson gets the call in. Can they stop him on third and less than two? Well, the red zone problems continue. Smith belted in the backfield. Great penetration up front by Pearson. Redshirt freshman out of Oklahoma City. Did he ever shoot that gap? Yeah, he did. And, you know, that's it. I mean, here it is. Right there, there's the penetration. 
along with Devontae Fields. So they stopped them, and they're forcing another field goal attempt here. Goes back to their problems coming in over the last three games in the red zone. They started first and 10 at the 18. It's going to be a 30-yard attempt for Quinn Sharp. Two of two. Man, make it three of three on the afternoon, accounting for all the points. So it's down to five, 14 to nine, with 4.55 to play. TCU up by five. When we come back, we'll look at our college football studio with Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen. are doing right now. <laughs> It'll be Sky Dawson. Although Quinn Sharp has not let them bring the ball back, basically. Dawson back deep with Josh Boyce. 14-9. Wasted opportunities in the red zone. The story for Oklahoma State. Good field position wasted for TCU. Otherwise, they could have more than 14 on the board because they had two in plus territory starting their second and third possessions at the 42 and 46 of Oklahoma State and came up with absolutely no points. Well, is it wasted opportunities or is it good defense by Gary Patterson who's getting working up a pretty good sweat and a pretty good lather? I don't blame him. Yeah, but here's what he's done. I mean, he's held Oklahoma State to one for seven on third down. And in that uh, red zone, which we all like to talk about, I mean, they've, they've forced three field goals. And he told us, if you can hold teams in a Big 12 to field goals instead of touchdowns, you're going to keep the score down, and that's what they're doing. The Boykin, 6 of 13, starting the series, only 59 yards. Now, on the quick hitter, it's complete. Nine on the reception by Brown. And, and Ladarius Brown is just a big guy. I mean, he's wide, he's tall, he's 6'4", with a big body. And you can just see, you know, going up against Justin Gilbert, their best corner. I mean, he's just got a size advantage. I mean, it's hard to believe that he's just a freshman right now. And I was stopping Waxahachie on my way from Dallas to Waco. Yeah, you do. I gotta stop in Waxahachie. What do you? <laughs> Second and one. What's the food joint that you're hitting? One of my favorites. <laughs> it's batted back. Boykin. They list him at 6'2. He didn't look that big that time with James Castleman coming in. But that's that arm motion that kind of drops down, Joel. Well, it's going to be lower. You know, and so even though he's 6'2, you know, he's dropping that motion down. And I think that's why some of these balls get. See that wind up? That wind up right there, it's low. I mean, if he could get that ball up high and, and release it from up top, I don't think he'll get many balls batted down. It'll be third in the yard. So two freshman quarterbacks going at it today in Stillwater. Need one and they'll get it. And a lot more than one as it's Matthew Tucker, the big back at 6'1", 225, right up the gut. He's from Tyler, Texas. They've turned out a few running backs, haven't they? A little Earl Campbell action. <laughs> Shamil Gary yeah. gets to him finally in the secondary. Well, the key right there is the block on the outside uh, by B.J. Cotillon, giving it kind of a clean, a clean line of scrimmage, and he really hit that hole hard. So after going three consecutive possessions, three and out with a punt, finally a first down for TCU. And again, on the outside, Cam White. What a cushion. He's got a first down, but can you afford to play that soft on your corner? Well, I like everything I see from Cam White. And really, this receiving core of TCU's, I think, is impressive. A lot of young kids right here. But here he is working on Gilbert, just a, a speed out. And then that ability to stay on your feet and do just a little, little hurdle action. You talked, against the junior. you talked about Brown at 6-4, Kent White 6-3. Large receivers. Boykin on a little stop route. It's Sky Dawson. There's the speed. They were worried about it. Bill Young said he's the fastest receiver they've seen this year. Well, you know, he was the Mountain West 60-meter dash champ, also part of the 4x100 relay. And you're going to see just this little move here. I mean, we're seeing all three receivers on this drive, and you're also seeing just the accuracy that Boykin can throw the ball with on this short pass again. First down at the 35. Drive started back at the TCU 25. Nowhere to go, and a loss of two. Alex Ellis converging for the weak side backer. Well, they did a good job of containing Boykin, who 
when he wants to pull the ball down now, I mean, he's got running back skills. And when I watch him run in the open field, he looks to be about as fast as anybody in the offense. But Dave really hasn't gotten loose today. Boykin's first career start for Gary Patterson came on the road. He had a decisive victory at Baylor, 49 to 29. Boykin again waits underneath, wow. grab made, and boy, he took up a receiver and knew he was going to take a shot, but it helps to be 6'4", 210 like Ladarius Brown. He you know, saw it coming. And they have all these, you know, scouting services in the state of Texas. He was the number one ranked receiver with ball handling skills, and that ball, that ability to catch that ball and pull it away and get it away from Lindell Johnson here, snatch it and tuck it away, and then protect it. And take the hits like that. He's got he's got tremendous skills already. That's a guy that TCU is going to build around in the pass game going forward. That's his fifth round for 51. Now they need five and a half for a first down. And it's going to be a false start coming up. Very few penalties today, Joe. False start. Offense number 59. Five yard penalty. It's third down. And short ones for the most part. Only one on Oklahoma State. That is the fourth on TCU. And TCU has been penalized a lot this year. Uncharacteristic for Gary Patterson. Almost 70 yards a game. And so it's one of the areas that they want to cut down. Red zone turnovers and penalties are areas that they want to cut in half. Third and almost 11. Comes the blitz. Bring out the extra pass rusher, throws it in single coverage, jump ball, and bat it away. Boy, Ed Brown on a jump ball along with Kevin Peterson. And Kevin Peterson giving up five, six inches. He sure is. Are you going to see they're going to blitz off the corner right here? Boykin's going to just release it. Knows he's going to get hit, and he does. All legal. But, I mean, Ladarius Brown just, just jump ball. Really good job by Peterson. Rotating the corners right now, but... Uh, how you play the ball in the air sometimes is the key to who wins on Saturday afternoon. Overcrow, 10 straight, 14 of his last 15. He's trying a career best 52-yard attempt. It's on its way, and he's hooked it. It is still a five-point ball game, and Oklahoma State hits it back in great field position with 1.22 to play. So the Cowboys will have it. Their best field position to start a drive so far today, and still two timeouts on the board. Rather, the big speaker right above our booth. It is live <laughs> orange now. Yeah. It is a C. Our game summary with Quinn Sharp accounting for all the scoring. Bolo boat with a touchdown return. Awesome. Interception with a quick pick six. Didn't have to return it long. It was deep in Oak State territory. And now Oklahoma State from the 35. Two timeouts on the board. And the deep ball with a flag down in the play. He's looking for Charlie Moore. He's working against Verrett again. And did Verrett get called on the hold again? Well, Charlie Moore has been the big receiver the last couple weeks. Before the pass, holding defense number two. A 10-yard penalty automatic first down. Well, Jason Verrett held him, but, you know, Charlie Moore has had touchdowns of 72 and 74 yards. <laughs> a veteran move. Not but, much. Yeah. <laughs> I think Charlie Moore was going for another one there if he didn't get held. Now Randall. Nothing available. Yard and a half, two at the most. Clock moving. Down to about a minute to play. Well, they, they get used, the next snap. And they're used to playing so fast anyways, Joel. You know they can get another playoff. And actually three timeouts left, but we're going to get a false start. Too quick for their own good that time on second and long. So it should cost them five. It shouldn't take a half hour to get there. Well, if, you know, if three show up at the cocktail party, you know, maybe four and five can get there at the same in, time. Turns into a seance. <laughs> They're going to uh, channel. <laughs> right. right. Coming over to explain it to Mike Gundy now. Yeah. Well, 
He's not going to go all the way over there. Before the snap, full start, offense number 82. That's a five-yard penalty, and by rule, under one minute with the clock running, this requires a 10-second runoff. To avoid the runoff, Oklahoma State calls their first timeout of the half, 30 seconds in length. So it pays off. Mm -hmm. Save the 10 seconds. Managing your timeouts early in a game, even if it's the first half. And saving 10 seconds, as you mentioned. And what it says is that Oklahoma State is in fast break mode. They want points here before the half. They're not the least bit happy with the three field goals that they've been able to muster so far. Well, the red zone, the problems. Uh, you look at the last three drives. Three out of the last four have been a 70-yard drive, a 63-yard drive, and a 55-yard drive, and they had to settle for three each time. It's the story of the first half. It'll be second. And about 15 ton of time for Wes Lunt. He throws it over the head of the intended target. Trying to get it out there. Good defensive play by Kevin White on the corner, though. Right. Because what he did was he put the receiver on his hip. It's Isaiah Anderson, who's been banged up yeah. and out. Yeah, he didn't play last week. But uh, good technique by White on the outside to pin him against the sideline. Trips on the wide side of the field for Lunt. He needs 14, almost 15, and it's Randall. He's got the first one to miss. Second, not enough. He's short of the first down. What a great ankle tackle by Olabode. And a timeout is called by Oklahoma State now. Stopping it, which tells you that they want to go for it on fourth down. Well, Olabode on your screen does a good job of saving this one because Randall makes the first player miss. All right, but Olabode right here just really by the, by the back of the calf is able to pull him down and uh, save a lot more yards after the catch. So a gamble. It's fourth and a little less than two, 42 seconds left, and a gamble because your opponent has all three of their timeouts left. Well, I mean, I, I think that right now Mike Gundy's got to think about this because their defense is playing well, Joel. They've given up really one touchdown here today. The, the other touchdown by TCU is off a of pick six, their defense score. So do you want to give TCU any opportunities with that field goal kick that they have to give them any momentum going in? I. I'd there be a little go. surprised if Mike Gundy, yeah. They're going to put Quinn Sharp out there. Called a timeout, talked it over. He didn't want to do it, but it's the right thing to do. So Sharp, wow, straight up. <laughs> and will they ever get to it? Finally at about the 22. So that's where... TCU has the decision deep in their own territory up by five 31 seconds left you can't believe they're going to gamble either on the road with a five-point lead full day college football will continue Baylor taking on Iowa State later tonight another big 12 showdown right here on Fox College Football so stay with us it'll start at 7 o'clock Eastern four out of the West Coast you gotta believe it's going to be a knee and the locker room for TCU it is they're trying to make it uh, their 21st road win over their last 23 away from Fort Worth. And they go to the break up by five. We thought it would be a game that could go down to the wire, and it really looks that way with two really good coaches. Well-coached teams. Well-coached teams right now. A little conservative offensively right now, but I think the defenses are just playing good football. And so that's really been the story on both sides. But as you said, two teams that don't beat themselves. Mm -hmm. Gary Patterson, a defensive-minded coach, getting his horn frogs together over on the sideline. Final word before they head in. And then Oklahoma State already headed back as you saw. But a real good game as we check in with Jim Knox. Jim? All right, thank you, Joel. Coach, you just huddled your team right here on the sidelines. What was the message? Well, you know, we always do. You know, my thing is before they go in to tell them, my thing is we get down the red zone, you got to go score. We've hurt ourselves. The penalties started on first down defensively. We just got to make sure we play the ball in the air. And we got to tackle. You do that, you got a chance to win the second half. You got to take ball games when you go on the road. There you go. Appreciate the time, coach. Thank you very much. Halftime here in Stillwater, Oklahoma, where TCU leads Oklahoma State 14 to 9. Now we take out to Los Angeles for a college football halftime with Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen.
Welcome back as we get ready for the start of the second half in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Five-point ball game. And when you look at the overall big picture, the numbers fairly close as well. Well, who says they don't play defense in the Big 12? It was a defensive-minded first half. You could see that TCU limited uh, Oklahoma State to just 211 yards, one for eight on third downs, keeping them to three field goals inside that red zone. Kicked away by Obergrove. And it's going to be Gilbert bringing it back at the two. He's got a nice lane over to the left side. Can't make a miss, though. Once he got to the outside, outstanding play by TCU's Deontay Gray, a return man on his own. Let's check in with Jim Knox. Jim. All right, Joel, just got through talking to Mike Gundy, Oklahoma State head coach. He said they got to do better in the red zone this second half. Also, short yardage situation, they have to improve. I asked him, how's Wes Lunt doing in his eyes? He said, okay. I said, just okay. He said he's not where he left off, just okay. Lunt, 7 of 16. Thank you, Jim. 133 yards. And he's been intercepted and went for a score. One of the first points of the game. It'll be Randall weaving his way. Up past the 28 to the 29 for a gain of three brought down by Chucky Hunter. So Oklahoma State and, and Mike brought up and Gundy brought up the red zone. They've settled for 22, 30, and 34-yard field goals by Quinn Sharp. And that is the difference right now. The opportunities have been there. They have sustained drives after a slow beginning offensively. So far, TCU's done a good job of limiting the big plays from Oklahoma State. It's Randall again. And it's going to bring up third down as he takes it up to the 32-33, shy of the first down by three. And so one of the big stories today was, you know, on third down, TCU, one of the best teams in the nation. Could Oklahoma State sustain drives by converting third downs? Uh, right there, Kenny Kane, the only senior on this defense. They've done a good job of limiting Oklahoma State to one for eight so far on this down. Empty the backfield. Randall in motion underneath. Poor throw, and it's wide of Josh Stewart. It's almost like he singled in on Josh Stewart and nobody else downfield as it goes three and out to start the second half. You know, what, one thing that West Lunt has to do, though, is read the defense as the ball's being snapped. So he had, on that last play, Joseph Randall wide open going to the right, but he'd already made up his mind that the play was to Stewart in the left. He bounced it off the turf. And so three and out to start the second half. Sky Dawson waits they run into sharp but they let it go and dawson calls for the fair catch close to his own 10 yard line it'll be a 57 yard punt and boy what a difference on special teams when you have a weapon like sharp so boykin back out there after a good start initially and then some interesting decisions down the stretch of the first half i thought he was good in the short passing game of course, the one touchdown throw to Ladarius Brown, freshman to freshman. That was the highlight for the offense. But under, right up there at 50%, no turnovers, though. And so that's a big part of his development is taking care of the football. Tucker will join him in the backfield on first down from the 10. And Tucker, belted by Levy. After it looked like he was going to get a big one, he got five. Still, good yardage on first down. And I bring up Boykin because he started out and he was under control, and you talked about driving the arm way down. They went three and out with a punt on three consecutive possessions before they had that last long field goal try. But the one thing that we really haven't seen from Trevon today is that ability to just sort of extend plays and create, use his natural ability to run with the ball. I mean, I think he's a pretty good natural running back. In Oklahoma State has limited it. Second and five. Really? And you said it, and he should get it. Ooh, <laughs> stuck by Levy again. Yeah. He was right at the marker. He got a great spot, so he should have enough for the first down to the 20. But Levy from Salina, Texas. Not Salina, Kansas, but Salina, Texas. Well, thanks for that distinction, Joe. I'm proud you did that. Uh, here's his ability, you know, he tucks that ball away, and here's Levy. Took him right off the feet. I don't know if that's a good spot. I mean, Levy just, wow. I mean, he didn't get any forward penetration on the play, but that's one of the few times that we've seen Boykin keep it off of that read option. I just wanted to make the distinction. I have family from Salina, Kansas. I have also family from Enid, Oklahoma. Northwest Oklahoma. It's batted back at Boykin and incomplete. Again. Ryan Robinson, right end out of Buford, Georgia. 
He timed it. Well, I mean, look, if you're going to drop this ball down, this is again, this is the throwing motion right now. And you're going to see this ball drop down kind of long, and it allows a Robinson on the outside just to get the hand up. We've seen that about three times so far today. And he's a pretty good athlete, 6'4", 250. You can see the elevation anyway when he came no up. No question. There's a good shot. Looking down overhead on this key second down. Will they rush four? No, they'll rush five. Now she get rid of it, and the pressure got to him. Boyce was the intended target well behind him. So they showed three, they came five. Well, that three-man rush package that they like to run, it's a blitz package. And so they kind of keep you guessing up into the snap of who's going to come. That time, they sent four guys to the weak side. One came free. And again, that, that ball, I mean, here they come. That ball's going to be affected by the pressure coming after them. Brought two backers. Yep. Now, big third down, field position wise. They're only one for nine so far. Or check that. Two for nine. Screen. Yep. Bubble. Nice idea, but he won't get there. Good recovery by Oklahoma State. It was Joy Tuan Low over there along with Sean Lewis and Liddell Johnson. They recovered nicely. And a fourth down coming. That looked like it was a pretty good setup, but really the speed of Oklahoma State's defense, they've only given up the one touchdown today to Ladarius Brown. They played very well. The wobbler from Perry. Charlie Moore waits, and the fair catch taken in cleanly at about the 36. So Oklahoma State, that was deep in row territory, field position-wise, most of the first half, first possession, or at least second of the second half, in real good shape. Welcome back once again. Classic football weather in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Game time temperature in the mid-50s. A little cooler now, but perfect autumn football weather. It's Randall. Man struggling his way across the 38 out to the 39. Gets three on first down, going down to the arms of the end. John Koontz. It's interesting, Mike Gundy at Oklahoma State says about Joseph Randall. That he's got to learn how to play it hard every play, every game. You only get 13 shots at it. I think you've got to look for a good second half from Randall. Fake it to Josh Stewart. Throw it out on a little bubble action. It's Randall. And Randall's got a first down. He had 76 yards rushing on 18 carries before that catch. And you talk about trying to find the football and misdirection yeah. to where well, it's going. Underneath, fake to Randall. Then the fake reverse to Stewart. Then you get the screen to Randall. Uh, that's a lot of misdirection in the backfield. Well done. And good call. Deception. We haven't seen a lot of that from Oklahoma State. We saw the flea flicker. Now on first down. It'll be Randall. They tried to rip it instead. He takes it down to the 40-yard line. Chris Hackett gets to him, but boy, they tried to rip the ball right away. Yeah, and they ran. he ran right through the freshman arms of Devontae Fields. So here's Fields on the outside. There it is. Runs right through that tackle. Fake it to Stewart. Throw it up in the middle, and it's complete. Big guy, Blake Jackson, at 6'3", 235, and he's got another first down and one of the better bullets from Lunt stepping into a throw. You know, and Blake Blake Johnson is a guy from uh, Community College in Arizona, Scottsdale Community College, and he has the nickname of Primetime, and all the receivers have nicknames. So he was telling me about Josh Stewie and uh, Primetime. Pretty interesting how they label those guys. Stewart was the motion. And left side of the offensive line. I mean, it looked like Brandon Webb, 51. Full start, offense, number 51, five-yard penalty. It's first down. And not that I saw him move, but I saw his body language afterwards. Yeah. He just slumped. Yeah. <laughs> the head just dropped. <laughs> yeah. So he's got his hands, you know, on the outside. Chucky Hunter's jersey, or David Johnson's jersey. And that's the call. One of the better throws. That'll be first and 15. Smith out of the backfield in motion. And he's available out in the flat. Trying to make a miss, does a good job. And he's got about 10, making 11 on the reception. Barrett finally gets to him. You know how, like in a lot of offenses, Joel, a lot of 
you call the running back the check down receiver. Well, in Oklahoma State's offense, the furthest receiver away from the ball can be the check down receiver. And the safety valve, if nothing's there, and that's all that throw was. Smith is single on second and five. Short side, big hole, Smith. First and goal down to the nine. Drop there by Hackett, but deep into the secondary. Watch Jeremy Smith getting a chance right now. Taking the load off of uh, Randall. Nice hole on the outside. And then there you can see that that ball stripped. Nice recovery by Taylor, though. That was a good strip by TCU. What about the red zone conversions? They haven't been there today for Oklahoma State. Randall in the backfield. He'll get it over to the left side, making a miss in the backfield. Down to the one he goes. So it wasn't available, the original path. Nice ad lib. Well, I said if Oklahoma State's going to get on track in the second half, Joseph Randall, I think, has got to be the fuel that does it. He's got eight touchdown runs this year. you got to believe right now that with the fullback Kyle Staley in there right next to him, this is going to be Randall. Up the middle. Can't get there. You talked about the TCU rush defense, seventh best in the nation. Yeah. Nothing's easy. It's well, outside of the one, closer to the two now. And that Kenny Kane, the senior, Olibode, who's got the uh, the first touchdown of the game on a pick six. This is huge right now. Third and under two. They've had to settle for 22, 30, and 34-yard field goals. It'll be Randall. And did he get there? It looks like he's there. No official word yet. Waiting. Both wing officials come running in. Nobody's giving it to him. They're putting him down. down. Fourth down. Hazley on the bottom. The middle linebacker. Randall giving an argument through the glass visor right and did now. Did it come out again at the end of the play? We'll see. There's Hazley right on the ball. Yeah. Well. Yeah. That came out that's, again. That's the key right there. Hazley put his head right on the ball. And you can see it's not in. It's not over the stripe. They're going to review it. He, was, he, used, he uses the helmet of the Horn Frog to maintain possession. Somehow. And then bring it back in. I don't know how he held on to it. But did it ever get I mean, over the, the stripe? Did it ever break the plane? Well, remember the big catch of the Super Bowl about five years ago. Tyree. David Tyree from Eli Manning catching the ball in the back of... Rodney Harrison's helmet. So here's here's Hazley putting his head on the ball. Ball's popping loose. Well, you can't tell. Yeah. So there we go. All right. Knees, Knees down. down. Yeah. Here yep. we go. My. Yeah. And then the ball's so it was ruled down inside the one and i think that's right where it's well, going to you know what he didn't possess the ball though when the knee was down oh, that's a good point and yeah, then he and brought then the ball loose. back in on the goal line hmm. sorry to put it that way <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it doesn't make it easy on the officials upstairs he loses it as the knee is down i see the the left knee is down right and the ball's out well it's not down yet ball's it's out. down now yep and then he brings it back in yeah Oh, wow. Now he possesses it right on the goal line. Yeah. Uh, so the ball is out, and then it's recovered, but it can't advance. You make the call. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I, I don't want to be in the position of making the call. Brought to you I'm by. I'm going to be hated by one side or the other. <laughs> it's got to be sold. It's a sponsored element. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's a five-point game with 7.46 left in the third. The ruling on the field stands. There we go. Thank you. So now it's going to be fourth and goal inches away. You're Mike Gundy. You have failed on three separate occasions. Not this close, though. Yeah, but you got to go for it here. you got to go for it. Here's why. Even if you don't make it, you put TCU back up to the goal line. You let your defense possibly get you a safety. And it's not like you can go, your quarterback never gets under center. It's not like a sneak. And his quarterback's not running the ball. Here he goes, Smith. There are two fullbacks in there with Smith. Both to the same side. Here it goes. And it's Smith. He's yep. in. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. Load up. 
That's what we're seeing in college football right now. Two fullbacks, teams loading up, and just running power football. Best drive of the day by Wes Lunt and the Cowboys. So the first lead of the day after trailing early 14 to nothing. Yeah. Now it's going to be 16 unanswered if Sharp puts it through, and he does. So it's gone, it's back, and it's good. And I'm talking about the ball coming out for Joseph Randall. That's some play by the middle linebacker. And Hasley's Hasley. helmet helps Randall keep possession of the football to bring it back in. <laughs> There's Smith a ball cleans handling. up. And Oklahoma State on top at home for the first time this afternoon. Fourteen lead now for Oklahoma State as we welcome you back once again. Ten plays covering 64. Now that's a long drive. Clockwise by their standards, 416. So Oklahoma State up by two. Well, that's TCU making them grind it out though. You know, and they did a good job right that time of mixing in what West Lunt did in the passing game along with both backs, Randall, and eventually Jeremy Smith. Sharp will kick it away. Will they bring it back? No. Over the head of Sky Dawson, and I said to you while we were away, a couple of factors for TCU. Sky Dawson was involved. They scored 50 points in, in a loss, yeah. 53 in a loss last week. They need to get touches for number 11, a I playmaker. I agree. I mean, he had 10 catches last week for 150 yard, 154 yards and a touchdown. And that's a guy that they can, you can find a lot of ways to get it to him. You get it to him on jet screens, uh, you know, sweeps, bubble screens. There's a lot of ways to get Sky Dawson right here in the slot, the ball. First down for the 25. And Boykin. Going underneath to Ladarius Brown. And he's got a first down. He's got the cushion on the outside up in front of Justin Gilbert. And it's a gain of 11. Well, Ladarius Brown got the ball. And he got the catch in the first down. But really, Sky Dawson ran off the coverage with a go route from the slot. And I think both those guys on the same side of the field is a good way to attack Oklahoma State. I mean, eventually, you know, your quarterback has got to help you win games. And right now, Javon Boykin, even though this is just his fourth start, I mean, they're going to expect more out of him right now in the passing game. 13 of 26 passing, 123 yards. Man, he'll keep it and break the tackle. Good job out in the open field. Man, brought down to the secondary by Shamil Gary, but boy, he broke out yards after contact when he was hit originally at the line of scrimmage. Well, he's a dual threat, okay? And so he really thought about whether he should do this. I mean, here's really didn't know what to do at that point, but he kept it, broke one tackle, breaks another tackle. You can see the balance that he has. But Shamil Gary, those two safeties, Daytuan Lowe and Shamil Gary, good tacklers in this, at the safety position for Oklahoma State. Tyler Johnson had him in the backfield for a loss of a couple, but he stepped out of that tackle. Second and three, short side, option sweep, pitch perfect. And timing, Matthew Tucker, first down, brought down by Alex Elkins. And that... Uh, that read option that time, that's their warm-up drill that Gary Patterson's offense does between quarterback and running backs to start uh, practice here uh, game day. Just watching them pitch the ball, just coming down right now. All right, who's going to play that? Who's got the quarterback? Who's got the pitch? Well, the pitch was being blocked by Sky Dawson. That's what enabled him to get the first down. He's on the wide side of the screen. Dawson up against Justin Gilbert. They'll get it off. There's Dawson turning the corner. He's got serious speed. And he's got a first down. Going out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. They're finally, you got to get playmakers touches. Yeah. No matter how it is. I mean, if the quarterback is struggling, you get it to him on the reverse now. Now he goes. Justin Gilbert's got to see that. Get over on the other side. He beats all the pursuit. Pursuits look like they're in pretty good shape. But the speed of Sky Dawson outran the pursuit. And then you can see he's a tough one. A tough guy to tackle. The other guy that's been quiet is Josh Boyce today. Their leading receiver. It's down to the 41. Started back at their own 25. And a little double reverse and a throw. Yes, and wide open. 
It's Josh Boyce. He's got the first down inside the 20. Throwing the football, Matt Brown, a former high school quarterback who moved to wide receiver during the fall camp, sophomore from Allen, Texas. Well, okay, so you mentioned you got to get the playmakers the ball. So Josh Boyce hadn't been getting many today. They used a backup quarterback and a reverse pass. Both teams go into a little trickeration to get the ball down the field because the defenses have just suffocated the base offenses so far today. So the gadget play effective down to the 19. Dean takes over in the backfield. Time for Boykin. And now on the shadow cross, it's complete Cam White. And good yardage down to the 12 for a gain of seven. And this is the best looking drive I've seen from TCU today. I mean, it's just crisp, it's sharp. It's a lot of different elements to it right now. And the one thing about TCU's offense, they can play, they can play power football, they can play spread, uh, they can play pro style, you name it. Well, they've kept them off balance with all the different looks this time, haven't they? Yeah, just putting the freshman Colby Listenby in the game right now. He's out of Allentown, Texas. Man, looking for the first down, they won't get it with Catalan. He is shut down at the 11, only third and two. Let's head down to Jim Knox. Jim? All right, Joel. TC's running game could take a huge hit. Right now, Matthew Tucker on the training table. They're looking at his right knee. He came out a couple of plays ago after that carry. On the training table right now, Matthew Tucker. He's been, he's been hurt. Well, that's on top of the left ankle, left knee injuries that he's been battling, I think, since the SMU game. TCU just two for ten on third down so far. Trailing for the first time, but a very efficient drive from their own 25. They'll stay alive. Need two. Man, won't turn the corner. Catalan chopped down completely. Well, what Making the play, it was Liddell Johnson. Yeah, Lindell Johnson has had a good day today. Just a quick penetration right from the outside linebacker spot and never let Catalan get going. The right read by Boykin. But Johnson just refused to be blocked. So now to regain the lead. Obacrome missed. Uh, would have been a career best 52 yard attempt. This is going to be a 31 yard try. On its way. And did he leave it out to the right? Yep. Yes, he did. Never hooked it in. So a young man who came in with 10 consecutive made field goals and 14 in his last 15 tries. True freshman from Arlington. Now is a streak in the wrong direction. The miss, that was a long one the first time. This, though, makeable from 31 yards away. So the Cowboys still up by two and get a big break in the process with 2.41 to play in the third. Cowboys by two, and Oklahoma State has the football. 2.39 left in the third. Lunt out of the gun. Ton of time, middle of the field, and he's got his big receiver, Jackson. Nobody covered the seam, and the big guy rumbling inside the 40. Boy, talk about taking a few to get him down. All the way to the 34. That'll get the crowd involved. Well, that's their biggest target in Blake Jackson. The uh, transfer from Scottsdale Community College at 6'3", 235. It looks like what they used to have in Justin Blackman, along with Des Bryant here as their go-to guys. He's got tight end size, so he's about yeah. 235, 240. Stewart in motion, and he's available in the flat. Nobody accounted for Josh Stewart. He's got another first down. He's taken out of bounds at about the 20. Well, this is the play before, and here's Jackson coming inside. You can see he runs right at the linebacker, Kenny Kane, then he goes vertical on him. So they're attacking the linebacker spot. You can see they're trying to strip that ball out, but those are some pretty strong guns from the guy that calls himself prime time. Lunt has hit his last five passes. He is now 12 of 22 for 233. It's Stewart, and that was a very dangerous throw with the D-back. The safety on that side, Sam Carter, there on the arrival of the football. And nothing the other wide out more could do. Well, Sam Carter read the play perfectly. But I think for Wes Lunt right now, the rust is getting shaken off. I mean, he's throwing the ball crisply right now. He's seen the field well. And the second half, it's been good execution. It's 
second and ten play fake. Randall, it's batted into the air. And good read by Kenny Kane. The senior from New Orleans from Metairie, Louisiana. Charles, I, brings up a third and ten. I was talking to Wes Lump before the game. You know, he's coming back. Six weeks he's been out with a bad knee. I swear he's got more freckles than whiskers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you, say, That's a baby. when you say a freshman now, I mean, he's... Now, he can throw the football, but, you know, he's just... He's just in his first year now. Here comes the Heat, sidesteps a ton of time. And there'll be, there'll be a couple of flags. One in the backfield, one in the secondary, two in the secondary, as they held up Josh Stewart. It was definitely defensive holding. Was there also holding by the offensive line, though? There are fouls by both teams on the play. Pass interference, defense number six. Holding. Offense number 71. The fouls offset. Repeat third down. So another throw coming up from Wes Lund as they call it on the left tackle, Parker Graham and Olaboat. Mount in the secondary. Olaboat, Parker Graham trying to detain Devontae Fields and then right here in the middle. Uh, Josh Stewart not able to get free to get to the ball. So you basically a do over in football. They need 10 on third down. Middle of the field's there. Touchdown, Moore, Oklahoma State. <laughs> well, Charlie Moore's been their big receiver the last two weeks, and I got to give Wes Lunt a lot of credit because that kid just hung in the pocket. It was collapsing, and he was patient, and he was waiting for Charlie Moore to break open, and he did. And that says an awful lot about how West Lunt is playing in the second half. Trying to make it a nine-point lead. Quinn Sharp does that. So now it is up to 23 unanswered points by Oklahoma State. And Lunt settling in. We talked about hitting five straight. Well, this is the one that counts. Jackson set it all up. And then the 20-yard touchdown toss to Charlie Moore. All of a sudden picking up the pace. He is the first true freshman quarterback to start at Oklahoma State since his head coach did for Pat Jones back yeah. in 1986. Mike Gundy, starting quarterback for the Cowboys. Sharp kicks it away. It's over the head of Sky Dawson. That's one way you don't have to worry about kick coverage. Well, he's it's such a big part of Oklahoma State's success, what Quinn Sharp's done the last four years, whether it's touchbacks on the kickoffs, whether it's field goals to long punts. I mean, he's a guy right now that is a big part of the success that has made uh, Mike Lundy the winningest coach in Oklahoma State history. We both have a problem with our hair like him. <laughs> yeah. That's not a... <laughs> <laughs> it's the first down off the touchback at the 25. If I could wear it like that, I would have drawn it like that. I wish. <laughs> Dean and Catalan. Johnny Boyk into the backfield. Catalan trying to make a miss. Elkins is there. He's got him low and pushing him back after a gain of about two, two and a half yards. So now let's see if TCO continues to mix things up because they certainly kept Oklahoma State off balance on that last drive before it stalled and they missed the field goal. How many of the how many of the incompletions? Because Boykin is 14 of 27 have been batted down to the line because of that sidearm delivery. Quite a few. Second and eight. And wide. It sailed wide of the intended target. Brown turned in. He went backside. Man, working against Justin Gilbert. Another third and long. And here comes, you know, Oklahoma State with their pressure package. So they'll have a three-man rush. They'll have a bunch of guys dancing on the outside, trying to keep Trevon Boykin guessing who's coming and who's not. And the paddle crew starts cranking up the noise here because they know just how pivotal this play is. Boy, Bill Young's defense. They had given up only 24 points over the previous two games and only seven so far today. Because don't forget, they gave up only one touchdown. The other touchdown on an interception return. It's a three-man rush, and it's over a throw. Trying to get it out to Andre Dean, who was available 
The senior from Katy, Texas. Bandage three and out with a punt. All the momentum belonging to Oklahoma State. Look, it's just a three-man rush. And really, Trevon Boykin just, he just, he rushed the throw. And it sailed on Menagerie Deans. He's upset because he catches that ball. He's got a first down and a lot of room to run. But is it going to sail on you when you don't have the release point the same every time? Yeah, it, it is. It's going to be punted away. Man, bringing it back, Charlie Moore. Put it on the ground and covers it. Back at the 21. So Oklahoma State. With everything working their way right now, a nine-point lead. You join us late. They were down 14 to nothing. <laughs> Just watching Charlie right. Moore. You know, when you fumble the ball, you got to spit on your hands, right? right. You gotta it, get had the stick to, it had to be loose and, yes. and, and slick. It wasn't me. It was just my slick glove, <laughs> my gloves. It'll be the 21-yard line for Oklahoma State. Final 40 seconds of the third. Short side, Smith. And maybe a yard at the most. And that well, should be the final snap. Yeah, you know, for TCU here, going into the fourth quarter now, they need to do one of two things. One, they got to create a turnover. You know, some way, somehow, Gary Pierce, Patterson has got to dial up the pressure to get the ball out or intercept the pass. And then they've got to strike with a big play. I mean, they need a big play from somebody in special teams or the offense. Well, they were down as they start to... Come alive here through three in Stillwater. The Cowboys try to make it three straight wins. But don't forget, TCU was down 10 late in the fourth last week and came back to force overtime. It's a nine point deficit now. And so if you take a look at what they've done here in the second half to take the lead it's the offense has really begun to click the leading offense in college football and jeremy smith would punch one in from mike gundy from one yard out mike gundy talking and inspiring the defense to keep up the good work as they've shut tcu down here with 23 straight first snap of the four there's going to be second and nine for the cowboys at their own 21. Jeremy Smith met in the backfield and drilled by Joel Hasley. He was the Big 12's Defensive Player of the Week in their victory over Kansas. Former walk-on, a real good story for TCU. And active. I mean, really active now. And, you know, when, when Hasley tackles you, he puts his helmet right on the ball. You know, and that's how you knock the ball out. That's how you force the turnovers. Loss of two, third and a couple. Man, it's Josh Stewart. Middle of the field, it's available again. But it's like a little slant and a pick play to boot all the way across the 35 before he's met by Barrett. But the key is, is he hit him at full speed. You know, that so there wasn't a single blink of hesitation for Stewart here on this quick slant. And then you he like just the sees the, ah, I, you know, he's got a lot of returner in him. He's, he can dance through traffic. Take the jet, give it to Randall, who spins for an extra couple across the 40 to the 42, but the element of the jet sweep in the back of the mind to free somebody on the outside. And right now, TCU is really taking some body blows here to the speed and the execution of Oklahoma State. You know, in all phases of the game, we'll see if they can survive this here. They need something to slow them down. Oklahoma State had 157 yards of offense in the third quarter alone. They scored two touchdowns. The back picks up the rush, and coming over the back of Jackson early, they call the interference on Chris Hackett. It looked like it was about a 50-50 ball from way up here. Well, it looked like a bang-bang play. I mean, Hackett's from the safety position. He's trying to knock the ball out. Looked like he was going right through the man to get to him. Pass interference, defense, number one. Spot the foul, automatic first down. Automatic first down to the 45. I thought Hackett might be making a play on the ball here. Coming right through the man. Oh, yeah. I don't know. That's a pretty good play. Yeah, <laughs> Honestly, tough. He got there the same time the ball did. Randall. And Randall again, after he's wrapped, he gets three extra yards after contact as they put him down to the 40 yard line. It's a gain of five. And if ever Oklahoma State, and they love the, these two minute drives, but they wouldn't mind a four or five minute one now. No, especially the way Randall is running here in the second half. That one puts him uh, over 100 yards for the day.
So Westlund taking his time on second and five. Randall again, little stutter step. Boy, he waited, he bolted, and he's got it down to the 31. Dropped by Kenny Kane. But again, great vision. Well, those splits are coming a little bit more often right now. A very good pass blocking offensive line by Oklahoma State. But Upstein in the middle, along with Taylor, they're getting some, some openings right now. It's 25 carries, 111 yards for Randall. He averages six per pop coming in. Leading the Big 12 at 127 a game. Now looking for Jackson and a break. It's incomplete. But man, what a collision. And also threw into double coverage as Olabod and Hackett collided. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> they, need, they need some smelling salts right now. But it just shows you how hard they're playing. I mean, just a mid-air collision between the two, but they're go both going for the ball. And Hackett got a piece of it. And that's why it was a break for Wes Lunt. Chris Hackett, one of those players out of Tyler, Texas, Taylor, Tyler High School. Just a, another one of those redshirt freshmen, but really a good player that plays the game at a fast speed. You talked about it. These, I watched the two head coaches before the game, and, and they spent as long a time together as any two I've ever seen before a game. And, and you mentioned it in the first quarter. Yeah. Gary Patterson and Mike Gundy compete. Did they recruit against each other as much as any other schools? Well, I mean, a great deal of Texas kids on this Oklahoma State program. It'll be second and ten. There is a bubble outside. Stewart got the block down the sideline and barely bumped out of bounds. For the first and ten inside the 15. Well, Stewart really helps to make this offense go. I mean, it's just a, basically what you call a smoke route. I mean, nobody even has to know that they're throwing it to him. The corner is just off. And as soon as he catches it, he's at full speed, top speed in about two steps. Same thing. Man, this time he pays for it. And it wasn't a D-back who got him. He felt that. It was it's, Marcus Mallett, the sophomore it's, linebacker. It's a good thing that mouthpiece is strapped on, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Those are kind of hits there that knock the mouthpiece out sometimes. He's a sophomore from Cleveland, Texas. And that was form tackling. <laughs> he lowered his shoulder. It'll be second and nine. Smith. And that was torpedoed by Mallard again. Boy, yeah. is he showing it up. Well, he, he sure he is. really submarine that play. Well, he's just giving Hasley a rest. I mean, we were kind of rotating in there, trying to keep some fresh bodies here as Oklahoma State has really won the time of possession battle in the second half. And, and this is the key, to hold them to three. Yeah. If they get six, potentially seven, it could doom them the rest of the day. Three is a different story. They got two defensive tackles Want to stop the run right here. Lunt with time and his receiver fell down. He was locked in on his wide out on that side and he tried to get it and it's Isaiah Anderson to a fault. And if anything you talked about the rust progressions and going off here the guy that you had a primary look at. Yeah. Now, West Lunt's played really well here in the second half, and any questions about that knee and how it was going to hold up, it uh, looks like it's getting stronger with more confidence. 32-yard attempt for Quinn Sharp. He's already three for three today. On its way, make it four for four. So he is four for four. It's a 12-play, 64-yard drive. Just about four minutes into the fourth. Oklahoma State now by 12. Are celebrating in Stillwater four minutes into the fourth but a lot of time left for TCU it's a good shot anyway as we take time on our quarters light freeze cam oh, that's good and a good matchup going in between a four and two Oklahoma State squad and a five and two TCU team one of the better offensive teams in the nation and then TCU of course over the last 10 plus years because of Gary Patterson and the way they prioritized one of the best defensive units in the nation. So you used to have guns like Jeremy Smith there. I still just do. Big I, I, just don't flex the like, I just don't flex like that. You anymore. don't need to anymore. I just wear those baggy shirts. Yeah, you're covering up <laughs> brand new sweatshirts from the Oklahoma State bookstore Dupree. this week. I go to the old fashioned uh, sporting goods stores. You can find a bargain. Dupree's here in Oklahoma State. It's still water. Long kick. And again, 
Dawson out of the equation because of Quinn Sharp. Let's check in with Jim Knox. Jim. Joel, looking at the sidelines right here, this TCU defense looks like a tired bunch right now. They've been on the field an awful long time here in the second half. The offense right now has to sustain some type of drive to give these guys some type of rest. This offense also needs to put points on the board first. Well, they got a break. Their defense did hold after they made them stall inside the 20-yard line. So it's still a game. If it would have been a touchdown for Oklahoma State, we couldn't have said that. But it's only a nine-point, make a 12-point difference now. As opposed to 16, had they picked up a touchdown. And Jared Anderson, the offensive coordinator of TCU, has got to think big play right now. No safeties in the middle of the field at the snap right now. they got to find a way to get behind that defense. Three on top, including out. Dawson. He's got Dawson over the middle. Dives, goes down in front of Elkins with the catch at the 31. So the senior from Mesquite, Texas, we talked about it, needs some touches. And TCU goes to hurry up mode for about the first time today. That was a good decision by Boykin to pull the first ball down, hitch, and come to a second receiver. Game of seven. Little twist up front. Man, it's available, complete for the first down across the midfield stripe to Josh Boyce. There you go. Now there's there's the arm now. He can cut it loose sometimes, and he can't throw it on a line. Best throw down the field by Boykin today. It's a gain of 22, as Boykin is now 16 of 31 for 159 yards. Out of the gun, ton of time. Boyce again can't make a miss, as he is put down by Sean Lewis. Look back at the previous snap, though. Watch well, just a corner route by Boyce. And this, when he steps into it and really cuts it loose, it's long. But you see, he didn't even step into that ball. And you can see the line that he throws it on. He's got a strong arm. It's the delivery, I think, they need to spend time with. Tighten it up a little bit. It'll be second and four from the 40. Slide Catalan. H back over to the short side. Underneath, it's tipped to Fleckton. Man. The quarterback felt the pressure from Tyler Johnson, the junior from Haskell, Oklahoma. Tyler Johnson getting a chance to come off of off the edge right now to the backside. And the rush ends aren't big. They're real athletic, though. No, but that's all you want. I mean, 240 pounds from Johnson. Just on a short corner against a sophomore tackle. Well, it's four down territory, the way you look at it, especially on this side of the 50. Right now, they're just two for 12 TCU on third downs. Man, he's putting it up for Boyce. It's a jump ball, and it's knocked away. It hung up too long, low. The free safety had plenty of time to go over there and recover. And they're going to stay on the field. They're not going to punt this way. Don't have a choice. Not little. Like that's it's just a natural rub route. They got Boyce open. They got him free, and I thought he threw it too late. Put right. a little too much air under the ball. That's a good play, good route combination to get Boyce loose. Good protection that time. Look, it's only fourth and five. I mean, you, there's a lot of short routes that you could run right now. And if you roll the cornerback, maybe he yeah. can get it on his own. Well, you know, to the wide side now is to the right. A little roll out here might be good. He's going for the bundle. Man, it's battered away. And it's picked off on the deflection. Flag on the play. One for Ladarius Brown. It's intercepted. It looked like it was against it's offensive Dave pass. It's low. Yeah, he was coming up the back. Justin Gilbert knocked it away. Daytuan Lowe came up with it. But it was Ladarius Brown. Wow. And they're going to... Man, did it go out of bounds? This may be reviewed. Defense, number four. 15-yard penalty and each play, of course, in college football is reviewed. Now, did he go out of bounds? And did he go out oh, of bounds? Yeah. yeah, he's out of oh, bounds yeah. before the flag. Now, are they going to say the interference was the reason he was forced out? The ball's in the air, but didn't he go out on his own? Yeah, we should get a review out of this play. Yeah, I mean, and TCU's and, trying and to snap Gundy, it as quickly as possible, right. which is smart. And right now, it hasn't been stopped. So they're not going to get a review. First down to the 25. It'll be Sky Dawson. Belted inside the 20. Here's the tough part of this. When is the flag thrown? 
Yeah, so Ladarius Brown and Justin Gilbert on the outside. And I'm still waiting to see the interference, to be right. honest with you. I mean, Justin Gilbert can't play it any better. He's playing him on his hip. He's widening him out of bounds. I, I don't even see the interference. He gave him in that five to six yard area, and it's supposed to be five. A little shot. Here comes the heat on Boykin. And it's deflected. Boy, the length of Broderick Brown to get a piece of it. To knock it away from the intended target, Cam White. It'll be third down at about four. I thought Boykin could have pulled this ball down and, and taken off for it. You can see great protection. He thought he could fit this ball in, and Broderick Brown is, look at, you can just see on the outside, Cam White's just sitting there waiting to, to catch it. A lot of time left in this game. 8.59 of the fourth on third and four. A lot of time, but TCU needs a touchdown here, Joel. Extra pass rusher comes over the middle. It's wow. complete. And where will they spot it? Lines put on this side. Has him short of the first down by less than a yard. What a boys Roderick down. Brown brings him down. And you're right. Boys totally exposed on a catch like that. Right. You know, the ball, I mean, he went way high for it. So you're, you're fourth and less than a yard. And quite a quick snap. Him. Yep. And no. he'll get the first down. Elkins brings him back, but Trevon Boykin with the quick count, quick snap, and a first 10-10 inside the 15. I don't know if they were all set. All 11 guys were set when Boykin had the ball snapped from James Fry. Uh, not here they come. They right. come. Uh, right there, they're okay. I don't know if on the outside that they were set. They spread the D. Man. There's going to be a false start. These are really upset fans. In Stillwater, Oklahoma, and I don't think it has anything to do with the play you were just talking about, but the interference call with the receiver out of bounds. On fourth down. Yeah, it was fourth and four. Right, it was fourth and four. And it was deflected and picked. So this is the series of the game. They need two touchdowns. Trailing by 12. 8.03 to play. And all three timeouts still remaining for each team. It's out of the hands of Boykin. It slipped out of his hands. Any whistle, got to pick it up. It's a live ball. It's going the other way. That is. And it's picked up by the lineman, Nigel Nicholas. Man, was it tipped out of the hands? Nicholas coming up with it. It looked like it just came... Out of Did the it back squirt, end, right, out when, of Boykin. When it was just relief, it didn't look like the arm ever went forward. And going forward, it is a fumble recovered by Oklahoma State. Yeah, I was watching the referee behind the quarterback, and it was a live ball. Well, Reggie Smith is the referee, and he, he made the call immediately. Now, nobody knew it. Did it just slip out of the back of his hand? Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Yeah, it's knocked oh, out. Yeah, it's knocked out. Knocked out by Nicholas. Yeah, and then Nicholas, alertly, because he was the one who got it, goes after it. Yeah. That's an incomplete pass. Yeah, but did it go forward? Did he get it out before the ball started? Interference by Oklahoma State. The five-yard penalty will be enforced on the succeeding spot. Oklahoma State keeps the ball. First down. It'll be reviewed, but it looked like he got it before the arm started forward. Now, if it's reviewed and they give it back to TCU, it'll be interesting. Nigel Nicholas, though, the senior from Rossville, Georgia, with a huge play. And a great smile on the well, sideline. Let's get a couple looks here. On the field of a fumble by the quarterback is under further review. Oh, yeah, that ball's just knocked right out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the right call. It looks like his arm was still back. Maybe a better one, better angle Well, that's angle what I'm here. saying with that Ooh. motion. That was moving forward. But you know that we're talking about that loopy delivery. Of right. His. That's where it comes in. If you were tightening that up, it would never be in that spot. See, for the, the first forward and third. The forward motion, I think, goes after the ball is tipped here, Joel, by Nicholas. Are you sure? It may be starting forward. That's a yeah. good look right there. But it's such a long, elongated move. It's just sitting back there waiting to be tipped like that. I'm still surprised that it wasn't reviewed on the played out the sideline. 
Otherwise, it goes back. If the play well, doesn't stand, it goes back to Boykin. He's, re he's sort of reviewing it himself right now with Josh Boyce. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Empty him. So what you're saying, if he shows form like a West Lump, where the ball is straight back, well, I said, you know, I as said opposed the to the sidearm delivery. I talked to Jared Anderson about it this week. I talked to Gary Patterson. It's just a very elongated movement in motion, and that's where it hurts you. On that little snapshot of a play, the difference between an incompletion and a fumble. It's Joseph Randall. He spins for five, give him six. Now, here is a team that doesn't like to run the clock. Here's a team that always likes tempo and rhythm. And they want to go fast, but now they need to choose some time. Let's see, because it's not a characteristic of theirs if they can slow it down a little bit and use the play clock. Well, I don't really understand this aspect. Like, I know they're, they're not going as fast as they normally would, but why wouldn't you just have that ability to take the air out of the ball when you're up by 12 in the fourth quarter? It'll be Randall again, and he's going to be short of the first down by three almost four and i bring it up because we've seen other teams lose because they didn't run yeah. some clock late well i mean look mike gundy has said you know we're not great in short yards and goal line we're not built that way we're built to do this and their idea is we're just going to keep piling on points by playing fast and sometimes you just have to i think play smart it's third and four He's got Randall still flanking over to the right in the flat. Randall, can he get there? Yes. He should have enough, although he doesn't get a real good mark. No. They put him out short of the first down. This should be reviewed as well. Let's see where he went out of bounds. He looked like he knew exactly how far he had to get that ball. And that's in front of the Oklahoma State bench. <laughs> so they're not upset at all. <laughs> not in the last four minutes. And the calls are putting the fourth down marker up. So let's see. See, he puts it, the toes in bounds. Yeah, and, and then he lunges. The marker, and then he lunges. So and the it's, ball, right, is going forward. Yeah. I, he's look, waiting for a review. And he's going to get one. Yeah. On the spot. First charge timeout. No, he won't. Oklahoma State. He was waiting because he hoped play would be stopped for review. Now Oklahoma State uses a timeout, or will they? Because they may get it back on a review. No timeout. They're going to review it now, well, so no get, timeout. He's got to get past the 48-yard line. That right toe is in bounds, and he dies way past the 48. I mean, I think this is going to be overturned. It's a great individual play by Randall, and the toe was in bounds when he eventually launched. And Reggie Smith, <laughs> Reggie Smith here has had a lot, a lot of tough calls to make, but I think this one is going to get overturned. Well, I always enjoy talking to Walt Anderson, the head of Big 12 officials, so I look forward to asking him about that play down the far sideline the other way. Yeah. The one thing we couldn't see from our vantage point when the flag came out. Right. Was it was he forced out of bounds with with defensive pass interference? Exactly. We'll take a timeout while they review it upstairs to see if it's going to be fourth and less than a yard or another first down for Oklahoma State. After further review, video evidence has found that the ball crossed at the 48 and a half yard line, which is sufficient yardage for a first down. So Mike get Gundy gets the call he was looking for. That it, it appeared to be across the 48. And now it's another first down as we welcome you back to Stillwater. Six minutes to play, clock moving. And using the play clock, will they ever here at Oklahoma State? Well, this is a pretty good delay right here at the yes. line by him. They're waiting. Lunt. And more out of bounds, even if he catches it. Yeah, the hat on the side judge came out late. But we never saw the hat come off on the other sideline, which is interesting as well. 
Well, we just saw two guys throw their hat on that last play because there it is. So the hat comes off as soon as somebody from the offensive side of the ball goes out of bounds. They can't be the first to come in and touch it. So they mark it with the hat off. Stops the clock, though. Aids TCU with 542 left. Second and ten. It's Randall. Man. Breaks out of a tackle to the backfield. It looked like David Johnson was going to drop for a loss of a yard or two, but the strength of Joseph Randall, who is now over 100 yards, well over 100 yards for the sixth time this year yeah. over those seven games for the Cowboys. And I thought he's had a really good, strong second half, both in receiving, too. Now, he's a very good receiver, catches the ball well, but here's a guy right now I think that has helped play keep away from TCU in the second half. Strong. Almost at a season average of 127 yards a game. 120 on the ground, 37 on five receptions, so 157 of total offense. Underneath, Jackson again. How can you lose a guy that's 6'4"? Uncovered, loses wow. the ball, and the scramble. Did Austin Hayes come up with it? 84 was close. And they're going to say yes, it is Oklahoma State's ball, I believe. Yes. Austin Hayes comes up with the ball. The freshman, well, look at that ball, how far away from the body it is. <laughs> What's going on wow. down there? I mean, <laughs> and that ball. And you, you know, know what is, no, well, it's I out. Know. That's yeah, it. he's out. Boat right there is almost trying to create his second turnover of the day. And right before his knee touched down, he ripped it away. But an alert play by Austin Hayes, a true freshman from San Antonio. Boy, that was a mad scramble. They could seal the deal right here. Inside of five to play. Randall again. And a good job by TCU. No gain on the carry. But still, now does TCU think about stopping the clock? They've got all three of their timeouts remaining. Only two on the board. At least they have two on the board for Oklahoma State, although I believe they should have three up there. Well, Oklahoma State, this is like about as much as they can huddle right here. <laughs> they don't ever huddle if they do at a distance. About as close to the ball as they can get. Well, I think remember Sam Weiss called it the it. sugar. Yeah, that's, right by that's the ball. about a sugar. Yeah, it's like a a sugar huddle. Touchdown could end it. Three. TCU still has a prayer. Randall weaving his way inside the ten. Their issues and and the only issues they really had it was the first half. They started to move the ball. But then they stalled inside the 20. So they had they were 0 for 3 in the red zone of the first half. Otherwise, it would have been a more successful afternoon on the scoreboard. So two out of six opportunities. And now it'll be third and five at the 10. I don't want to take anything away from TCU's defense, though, because Joseph Randall, the yards he's gotten, he's earned them. I mean, it's just been good, tough, physical defense, I thought, from TCU here. Uh, Oklahoma State's this scheme right now is just tough to defend, especially with Wes Lunch playing like he has in the second half. It's their jumbo look in the backfield. Yeah, that'll do it for Randall. Yeah, they're still hitting them. Yeah, they didn't put them like we saw in the goal line situation, stack them two to the right side. No, just right from the inverted wishbone. He's brought down by Fields, one of the 16 true freshmen to be used this year by Gary Patterson. That's the most in college football this season. So it bodes very well for down the road purposes for TCU. And here comes Quinn Sharp. Four for four. From 22, 30, 32, and 34. So now he is 14 of 19 on the season. And tries to make it a 15 point ball game. He's got it. So the field goal. Uh, 27 yards away is perfect by Sharp, like everything else, especially in the second half for Oklahoma State. This is Ford Theater. Ford is the best in Texas. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com. Welcome back once again to Stillwater as we get ready for the final 232. Any magic in the Horn Frogs? They did it last week, don't forget. They were down by 10 yep. with about four minutes left. And they're about to get it back now. 
So yeah. and Boykin hit a long touchdown pass the 60 yard to Brown late. Then they got it back for the field goal to force overtime before losing to Texas Tech. And right now Kansas State is smoking Texas Tech at K-State. It'll be Sky Dawson and a late flag. Flag coming up and it looks like it's going to be an illegal block. They threw it near Jordan Moore. The reserve safety for TCU. Give credit to Bill Young's defense too. Brandon, they're facing a, a redshirt freshman quarterback. Receiving team number four at the distance to the goal, first down. Last week after Iowa State scored 10 to open the game, Bill Young's defense shut out Iowa State for 48 minutes. Yep. This would be a little more than 46 minutes if they hold TCU scoreless over the final 226. TCU jumped out to a, a quick 14-0 lead, and since then, Oklahoma's defense has just stifled. They've been excellent in every phase. From the seven, last thing they needed was a long field. They get it here. It's complete to Boyce. But he's ripped right away and pushed back shy of the 12. You know, and last year, Oklahoma State finished number two in the nation. And everybody said, well, it's just because of turnovers and takeaways. They led the nation in takeaways. Well, they're not getting takeaways this year. Only six all year in seven games so far. But defensively, they're playing much more sound with what Bill Young is doing. The completion. Man, he gave up the first down. Let's see where they spot him. No, they're going to give it to him. Back at the 18, it'll be a first down for Ladarius Brown, brought down by Joe Mitchell. Well, last year, in total defense, even going 12 and 1, Oklahoma State was 107th in the nation out of 120 <laughs> teams in total up. defense. Well, they couldn't get lined up. Now they're getting lined up, and they're stopping the ball from going over their head. Here comes the heat. Boy can hit as he throws up for grabs and intercepted. Going the other way is Daytuan Lowe. Unfortunately, Boykin's down low, trying to make a miss in the open field against Speed. Sky Dawson can't get him. Or will he? Yep, they say he's out of bounds. Inside the one, first and goal. But unfortunately, Boykin is down after the pick and the 43-yard return. And this is not going to be pretty for Trevon Boykin, who hung in there as long as he can. But when you grab it, it's, he's in a lot of pain. Hmm. Boy, less than 90 seconds left. Uh, it's just a three-man rush. Nicholas is coming from one side. And then, ooh. ooh it, and a knee-to-knee -knee with his own man. Yep. As Nicholas tried to get him, he was knee-to-knee -knee with his own offensive lineman, the left tackle. Uh, the left knee was completely twisted. Nicholas kind of just grabbing it. And you could see the concern by two CU's fan base. <laughs> doesn't want to straighten that out. Well, good to see him at least putting some weight down on it. It's a good see how that responds. He really did a good job. Matt Brown back up getting loose. He really did a good job until that last hit of really taking care of the football today. Matt Brown, the sophomore. They're going to look one more time. Daytuan Lowe comes up with the interception. They're still reviewing it. And did he get into the end zone? Uh, Sky Dawson is, is battling him here. The right knee goes down out of bounds, but I can't tell where the ball is when it is. Good hustle by Dawson. So now they're ready to put it back into play. The ruling on the field that the intercepting ball carrier was down short of the goal line is under further review. Wait a minute. They had a half hour while they got Boykin off the field. What were they doing? I mean, that's where they should have been reviewing it. I mean, it was obvious. <laughs> but that's the, that's the story right now is Trevon Boykin's knee. He grabbed the left knee immediately. It was twisted by the defensive end, Nigel Nicholas, as he was going down. Whoa. 
Some performance, though, by Oklahoma State's defense here in the yeah, second it's, half. It's funny how it works because Gary Patterson's one of the best defensive coaches in the country. Yeah. And his, well, D, and his D did not play poorly today. Not uh, at all. Oklahoma State averages 46 points a game. And, I'm, and I'm they came onto the second half and wore down his D. And I'm, I'm looking at, uh, well, here's the, the review of the play now, seen from a couple different angles. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. So Lowe does not get the touchdown. And you know how D-backs think that's a dream. The junior from Midwest City, Oklahoma, made the play. Does Oklahoma State just take a D here? They can. Although there's still timeouts on the board. Three for TCU. So they'll give it to Randall. He's in. Touchdown. Cowboys. And that'll do it with a minute 22 left. And believe it or not, that is the first time they've started with the ball today in TCU territory because the Horned Frogs had the advantage, especially in the first half when it came to field position. So the first meeting between these two schools in almost 20 years and now, they'll be getting together a lot more as members of the same conference. Sharp for the point after. And didn't see this coming. No, but Oklahoma State up by 22. That's been a total team effort, though. Quint Sharp kicking field goals, defense. Randall has been the story here. He's our Brown hand center. Great hands of the game. Yeah. As many touches as he has had today. And, and Randall has had 37 of those. 32 carries, five catches. There you go. I mean, and that's kind of what Mike Gundy has been looking for. You know, that type of performance. Big 12 game. They need him. You got the uh, the freshman quarterback coming back from injury. Uh, you know the uh, the offense gives up a quick pick six. They're down, and the paddle club is busy. But really, Randall should smile because that's uh, that's a heck of a day. Well, it, it says a lot as you mentioned how they dealt with adversity. Yeah. You're at home and you're down 14. They didn't panic, and they got the you know they got the uh, the reason to smile now. And they've earned it. They've earned that smile. And that feeling of, uh, you know what, we want a solid football game today. It gets a good team. Quinn they're Sharp. Right they're disappointed now. Javon Boykin, I hope he's good. I hope he is able to shake this off. But his team is, is going to be very competitive in the Big 12 here. They, they've proven that they can play in this conference. And we'll see what Matt Brown can do. But they got a lot of good young players that we talked about today that Going to give TCU a reason to have a bright future. Well, the test is coming now for Oklahoma State. And I bring it up because they've got K State in Manhattan next week. So everybody above Oklahoma State, as it's complete, it stays in bounds, though, for Tucker, or Catalan, rather. Yeah. Everybody ahead of them is coming up. Now, they go to K State, then sure. they're back home on the 10th, West Virginia. Texas Tech right here in Stillwater. And then Bedlam, don't forget Bedlam this year. He's in Norman. Yep. Well, there's going to be Bedlam in Norman tonight. <laughs> you know, <laughs> in, about, in a couple minutes. Running for the first down. That'll stop the clock across the 40. So Matt Brown. Sophomore from Allen, Texas. He moved to wide receiver during the fall. He was TCU's backup quarterback last season. And that's the role he's got now. There's a false start. You know, in 2004, Gary Patterson's team went five and six. The next year, they went 11 and one, and beat Oklahoma to start the season. False start. Offense number 85. This requires a 10-second runoff. To avoid the 10-second runoff, TCU, TCU. calls their first charge timeout. We, we talk about this because Gary Patterson rarely loses on the road. They're undefeated on the road this year. Their only two losses came at home and one to Texas Tech in overtime. So well, when well, you've taken 20 your last 22 away from home and you're 3-0 on the road this year, it is interesting. But he's working with a redshirt freshman quarterback with so little experience. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's hard to develop a quarterback while you're playing like this. You're going to have some ups and downs. They did with Andy Dalton, his freshman and sophomore year, and it paid huge dividends right. going undefeated his last year. And what a player he is now for the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah. 
He's just a winner. The redheaded rifle, right? Well, he's just, I like the way he competes. Well, he, you know, he but just he, competes like, almost like he's a lineman or a linebacker. Yeah, and he's smart. You know, he does a lot at the snap. He sees the whole field. Brown. Use the wide receiver skills. He's got a first down across the 48. Clock will start back up. Stop momentarily with 16 seconds left. So only seven points, don't forget, given up by the defense. Bill Young, their defensive coordinator, long time at Kansas. And it's picked off. Taken by Craig. Man out of bounds. Just wrap it up with a second to play. And now they'll run it out. That'll do it. So it's 36 unanswered as Gary Patterson heads over. To meet with Mike Gundy. Two really solid programs for a long time under these two head coaches. It'll continue to be that way. Dan, our what a burger, what a player. Well, you talked about the rust. He got rid of it. Probably from the second quarter on, it started to come together. Yeah, you know, and he, and he, and he really worked all the receivers. You know, Blake Jackson, uh, huge big plays from the big receiver right there, but it, it kind of spread it around. Spread it around uh, all over the field. Josh Stewart caught one. Charlie Moore caught a touchdown pass. And I just thought he got a lot of confidence in the second half. I mean, look, he ended up with 324 yards and a touch. Not bad. Let's head downstairs, join Jim Knox. Jim. All right, thank you, Joel. Coach, uh, they were talking upstairs about Wes Lunt. Your thoughts on how he played in the second half compared to the first? His competitive spirit was really good throughout the game. Much better in the second half. You had asked me at halftime, and I thought he played just average. Um, but, you know, he was coming off of an injury, and he's still a freshman with really two and a half games of experience for the most. So um, I was proud of the way he competed. The rest of the players rallied. Our running backs, our wideouts made some plays, and our defense was terrific. You talk about your defense they had a number of takeovers here in the second half. What was the difference going up against Boykin and that, that team on offense and TCU? Well, in the first half, we missed some tackles, and their running back did a nice job of keeping his legs moving, and we fell off to the ground. We talked about that at halftime. Our guys did a good job in the second half of wrapping up. We kept some pressure on the quarterback, and ultimately it comes down to turnovers. And we, we gave them some early in the first quarter, and then they gave some back to us in the second half. All right, Mike, congratulations on the win. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Joel? All right, thank you, Jim. A lot of people didn't know about Oklahoma State and how they would respond. They've taken two straight, but it was Iowa State and it was Kansas. Well, today, a step up in competition, and they look solid. Yeah, and look, they go to Manhattan, Kansas next week for an undefeated Kansas State team that took Texas Tech apart today, and he just mentioned turnovers. You can't turn the ball over against Kansas State. You won't win. And so it's good to have Wes Lunt get a full game under his belt, getting ready for next week, and that's really going to be the ultimate test for this team is can they continue to play defense the way we have seen them the last two games. Updated Big 12 standings because Kansas State did win today decisively over Texas Tech, so... Texas Tech losing their first conference game. Oklahoma, well, not conference game tonight, but they've got Notre Dame just, what, about a 45-minute ride, hour yeah, ride we from can here? Get there. If, we, if we get on the horse right now, Joel, we could get there. I got a feeling I'll be there. So, an interesting one today, and they celebrate at Oklahoma <laughs> State, and I that's like it. That's a great scene. That's a great scene right there. That's what college football's all it about, really, isn't it? It really is. So, a big one. For the Cowboys of Oklahoma State, and that is going to do it for us for Boone Pickens Stadium Finals 36 to 14. And coming up next on most of these Fox Sports Networks, Big 12 Triple Header is going to continue. Baylor taking on Iowa State. So stick around for Brian Baldinger, Jim Knox, our entire Fox crew. I'm Joel Myers. Thank you for joining us so long from Stillwater. You've been watching Fox College Football.